Hey, everybody. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Just Another Nerdy Podcast. I'm Jay. Tommy M.F. White. And uh, we have Dritz here, hidden right now. The, ra- <laughs> the rage machine will be here shortly. Uh, he's on his way. So, uh, hey, guys. How we doing? We got, a, we got a buttload of people in the in the thing. Um, All five of you, thanks. I'm going to turn this number off so we just can't see it. Because when those five disappear. I want... I want to act as if we're starting this stream off with five people and not, like, leaving the stream. We're going to grow to 20. When you see it, well, if we grew to 20, that would make me lose my fucking mind. But <laughs> it, it, I imagining, like, dropping off, mm-hmm. yeah, like, when that number drops, that's when you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Um, there we go. What is going on? Oh, you're, I think it's because you're futzing with the... Oh yeah, no, it was hiding my face. Oh no, so. that's fine. I was like, I was looking at the the audio bar. I was like, is that is that our microphone? And it was just going. <laughs> I was like, what's happening? Okay, hey guys. For those of you who don't know, this is just another nerdy <laughs> podcast. This is where we like to kind of just reject all that negativity in the world, and we want to talk about the the things that we are passionate about or nerdy about. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy. I myself. And what you would define as a Final Fantasy virgin. I have never played a Final Fantasy game. And there's a huge Final Fantasy sale on Humble Bundle. And then there's actually Final Fantasy games dropping on the Switch as well. Uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. I have m ms for us to try. Um, I found three three bags. So Tommy, are you ready for the flavors? Sure. No, I'm going to tell Drizzt when he gets here. So we're going to wait. We're going to save okay, it. Okay. You have to, you, he's like... I told him he was like, uh. <laughs> um, so we're going to try some fucking flavored M&M's. I want to see their reactions. I bought them for the podcast, so we have to eat them. I have to eat them. And then, um, so, and then, you know, we're going to talk about other shit. I was going to talk a little bit. I got a little bit of a Twitch rant today to go on. I, I have Twitch issues. <laughs> Twitch shoes. Twitch shoes. Tissues. Anyways. Um. So we're going to rant a little bit about that. For those of you guys who are curious, you can follow us here on, uh, on on YouTube or Twitch or Google Play or iTunes. Whatever you're watching us on, we're on all those platforms. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can download us, put a little not nerdy in your pocket if you don't have time to watch us. But if you want, you can watch us later on YouTube. Or you can watch us live every Wednesday at uh, 11. What's going on here? Because Chris just... Said something and I didn't get to see it on my thing. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Oh, he, he no. says, "Hey, Jay, Tommy, and empty chair." Hey, Chris. Hey, buddy. Chris, what's up? D- so Drizzt is on his way. He's on his way. He'll be here as soon as he gets his rage out. He's um, here. He's gonna be here in Drizzt time. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Noon means about twelve thirty. Yeah. Eight o'clock ish. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, you guys can catch us live every Wednesday, and then uh, Mondays we also do a Twitch streamer highlight. Uh, this week we have Tripod GG coming up. Uh, he's a pretty big streamer. He likes, uh, Fallout. Ooh, I love Uh, Fallout. And we're working on a few extra people here as well. So, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of getting some stuff going. You can follow us on Instagram if you want daily... We have daily duo clips now. I do a clip of the podcast and a clip of the Twitch streamer highlight interview. That's cool. Um, so you can check that out on our Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. Tommy's very active talking to people on there. And yeah. we're also doing our daily clips on there as well. Yeah. So feel free. Hit us up on Twitter. I'm always down to chat. Yeah. About we, you nerdy anything. We want to talk. That's the thing. That's we want what to you, engage what with, do. engage with you audience, viewers. So if you have any questions, drop in. Christopher Goodrich... What's up, fuckers? Say it. Say Say it. it. Huh? Say it. Your catchphrase. Man, fuck you? No. No. (laughs) You got a chest full of hate. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I got a a (laughs) chest full of hate and a mouth full of yelling. Chris was just dropping in. Whoa, Zephyr. A wizard is never late. late. He arrives precisely when he meets you. Oh, is that that V? I'm the wizard. Yeah, but is that V? Yeah, that's V. Zapphire is okay. uh, that, that's that's Zapphire. my girlfriend. I'm so sorry, V. I didn't. I got your name wrong too. I read it like a. I read it like a noob. I read it like a motherfucking noob. So fucking nub. Did we get a new program? Uh, no, it's the same program. I just changed the layout a little oh, bit so I like we can it. see when nice. people follow. We can see the window. We're doing. We're looking at you, and you're looking at us. 
but we're looking at something else. so there's like a window and then we have the names up here yeah. like up top and then you know there's of course our chat yeah, don't um that. what's what's happening guys so so today we're gonna be talking yeah. uh, a little bit about final fantasy okay you're looking at those totes like I'm, what the fuck man yeah like what the fuck man uh so i went to walmart the other day yeah. i'm ready to reveal my information <laughs> Tommy was like, uh... He's secret keeper. Um, I found a bunch of fucking flavored M&M's that are, oh, like, God. that they're out to try right now. And yeah. so, we're gonna try some M&M's on the podcast, guys. Oh, alright. That's fine. Um, so the flavors. <clears throat> flavors today. We have coconut. Oh. Oh, that's disgusting. First of all, they're all peanut. Okay, they're all peanut M&M's. So <laughs> Great. Coconut. <coughs> there is a an English toffee. And there's a jalapeno. I will warn you... I have tried all of these first, so I am not. I know that I'm not subjecting to you anything too fucking terrible. Too fucking horrible. Uh, because the jalapeno I tried, and I was like, okay, it's not that bad. Hey. Like, it's really not that bad. I was like, I was expecting like, <clears throat> you know, like please kill me. Mm -hmm. Turned out all right. Uh, we're also gonna talk about Final Fantasy today. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I'm admitting it, guys. I'm a, I'm a Final Fantasy virgin. <laughs> okay. I've never played a Final Fantasy yeah, game ever, and there's a fuckload on sale on Humble yeah, Bundle. I've, I've never, um, I mean, I played seven when I was younger, but aside from that, I, I haven't really um, okay. delved too far into it. Well, Tommy's going to do most of the talking today, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, is a, this is a blurry man heavy day. <laughs> blurry man. <laughs> I forgot about this. The, so, the shittiest superhero. <laughs> so blurry I will man. say, um, you can kind of sort of see me. I, I, so, I, anyways, I asked friends, like, what are your favorite Final Fantasies? Yeah. They don't have 7 on sale, but it's going on the Switch, so I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna buy it on the Switch when it comes out. Those fuckers out. better remaster it's it. It's technically on sale right now. It's you... not being remastered on, um, on it, the Switch. It's being remade, but, and it'll never come out. It's Cause... upscaled to they... HD on the Switch. But yeah, ooh, HD polygon. It's yeah, Technic sexy. technically on sale right now because you can get it for like sixteen bucks. Them dang. I don't know bits. if it's gonna be sixteen when it comes out or if they'll price it like they did nine. But yeah, well, so I was gonna buy it. I was gonna pre-order it because you can pre-order it for like sixteen. Yeah. So so Final Fantasy seven and nine are on the Switch. Um, I asked my friends like what ones they liked. Mm. I have a friend who she raved about eight all the time. She's like, you have to try eight. She's like, I don't know why people love seven so much. It's so amazing. I bought eight, and then I asked Tommy what his favorite was. If you say Lightning Returns, I will stay. No, no, I fucking read five. I but straight he up told me four. I like, straight up told him four comments, was his favorite. It says four. Jared I read five. five like a fucking. <laughs> Dumbass. I'm, I'm so mad at myself. Jay, you're fucking hopeless, man. Five looked cool, though. Like, I was looking at it, I was like, it looks like a Super <laughs> Nintendo game. I was like, I was like sitting there dancing to the music and shit. It was fun. No, uh, it, it's... I like your, uh, I like your makeshift um, soft lighting. Oh, that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a lamp Even in the corner. Even the bad Final but Fantasy I, is, is... that toilet oh, paper? No, that's tissue, or uh. tissue, um... Like, like, like wrapping like tissue gift, paper? Gift tissue yeah. paper? Yeah, mm -hmm. gift tissue paper. Wow. You wrap it around a light. That light cost me five bucks. Hey, man, if it's stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. I'm waiting for one of the uh, one of the ones that have, like, I have a lamp mm -hmm. as well, that big lamp that I had. I that, mm -hmm. that I used to point at us. Like, I have tissue paper wrapped around one of those, and then it just kind of wraps was, around my I monitor. I was going to say, I remember the shitty lamp we used to use for lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Another, the like twenty dollar lamp. Uh, another another down home episode with the boys, guys. <laughs> yeah. We've been doing this for just about a year now. Uh, it, it'll be yeah, a year in this May. summer. It'll be I think May is a year. I remember contacting you guys. It blows my mind like how much how much shit has happened in between yeah. then. I had to take a long like almost month break though for a bit because like. From this? Yeah, from the podcast. There was a good chunk where we didn't podcast for like really two anything. or three weeks. I was like, oh, yeah. I needed to take some fucking time. I remember I remember that stretch of time where it was like three or four months when it was just you and me talking into a camera. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just the two was talking about bullshit because Tommy was off chasing his dog. <laughs> chasing his dog. <laughs> walking to, in the rain. Trying to find which one of his friends jacked his fucking cell phone. <laughs> Tommy walked across town in the rain to be here. That Both just of shows. us had fucking cars. Yeah, he walked. Price Tommy. I was like, fuck. Phone. He didn't have a phone. Jesus. Oh my God, Chris has it marked. He's like, I think it's May 23rd. And I'm like, oh, that does not surprise me. Chris knows what's up. 
course he does. Chris, why don't we? Why don't we, we get to the fun? Parts? We know you. You. We know you were always there, Chris. You're. You're our. You're our biggest and one of our only fans. Take it. Take an M M&M and M or two. I really hate coconut. Can you so. guess what flavor? Yeah, I was gonna say. Can you guess what flavor this is? No, I can't. The 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 the, the thin candy shell. And to, to quote David Spade, your brain's got a thick candy shell around it. Oh, I'll eat it with you. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, feel free to yeah, pop it in. See what see what flavor you think it is. This is coconut. I already know. How do you know? <laughs> Just by a look. He was right. <laughs> I'm like an immediate coconut flavor. <laughs> yeah, I'm right because I hate coconut. Well, no balls are bullshit. Me. Whoever tells you otherwise is a fucking idiot. They're disgusting. Fucking, um... Um, I don't eat snowballs, really. Although, this isn't the worst, like... The thing I hate the most about, um... Coconut is the <laughs> texture. It's not the taste, it's the texture. So, I I can dig coconut in the right circumstance. <coughs> Are you sure? I think I'm allergic to coconut now. <laughs> <laughs> um, here you go, take one. Great, our fucking host is trying to kill himself on, on camera. <laughs> kill myself on they camera. They taste like the tears of Owen Wilson never had. <laughs> I agree. Did you get one? Someday you ate it, right? I th- oh, I. Ate What's your one. flavor guess Someday. on this one? This is the, the jalapeno. One we just ate? Mm-hmm. This is probably the jalapeno or the co- or what was the other one? There was a English. Those English are toffee. English toffee because they're like. Yeah, I, I can tell. Those ones, I, I'm I'm going to really like these ones because top. You know, okay, guys. What's your favorite candy bar? Well, there's an immediate sidebar. What's your favorite candy bar, boys? Ooh, um, Snickers is delicious. I'm straight king size milk chocolate Hershey, man. Yeah, like, you won't believe me when I tell you what mine is. What is it? It's Heath Bar. Heath is good. Heath. It's no... Dude, Squire is bullshit. Yeah. Squire ain't no Heath. This has some heat to it immediately. This didn't happen last time I ate this. That is a strange flavor. Actually, you know what? I've had spicier chocolate than this. Yeah. It's not that spicy, but it, it like gives it's, off... It's got on. a nice burn. Um, yeah. When I was uh, when I was fifteen, my aunt uh, had my name for. <laughs> I killed Tommy. My aunt had my it's name. It's not for, spicy. That tastes disgusting. My aunt had my name for uh, <laughs> for Christmas. My and God. She bought me a a, a, a full size like a, a seven person color coded Farkle set, and she bought me um, <laughs> fuck what was it uh, Tabasco. I did not like that one. Tabasco chocolate. Oh. Uh, a pepper sauce chocolate. And it was That's interesting. Fucking delicious. Um, I think though my Chris favorite... loves Snickers. Good. Damn right, Chris. Good. Good. Uh, my, uh, Drake thinks that um, my favorite candy bar is uh, for old people. <laughs> the Heath bar is an old person candy, is what Drake says. Mm, I disagree. He he used to he was eating at Three Musketeers. I'm like, dude, that's some good shit. I'd put it up there with Heath Bar, and he just about fell over. <laughs> I'm like, Are you fucking kidding me? Your favorite candy bar is a Heath Bar? He's <laughs> like, yeah. Story time. Um, Hit me with a J. My favorite, so stereotypical old person candy is like Werther's Original. I love Werther's. Because they're like hard candies. Mm-hmm. Um, I was cleaning the movie theater one day, and there's nothing that makes me laugh than a stereotype that lives itself out, like perfectly. It's the best. So I'm at the movie theater, and Gran Torino is playing. <laughs> Good movie. I love where this is going. <laughs> and as I walk in to clean the theater, there's a fucking line of old men in just one row. And that's it. And those guys leave. Dude, but this is the only time. So here's my thought. Okay, These coffee you... ones are rock solid. By These the are good, yeah. You really quell the heat. Um... So my my only thing is, like, if you, if you <laughs> sneak your shit into the theater, mm. be the fucking person to throw it away. This is the only time I will permit this as I was okay with it. Man, I, I used to clean that shit too. I, I dig. Yeah, but the only time that I was ever okay with it was when this line of old men got up and left, and that there was not an inch of that floor where those old men were sitting that weren't covered in Werther's original wrappers. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost my shit. I'm like, this is the best... That was the best thing ever. Like, well, I just clean. I was because I was laughing the whole time, and was I mean, it, it was one row. It was theater yeah. two, so what, wasn't wasn't Gran Torino like one of uh, who who was it? Clint, Clint Eastwood. Eastwood. It was Clint Eastwood's most recent film, right? 
Not as most no. recent, no. Really? By it's, far. He just What's had, he been in? He just had The Mule. Yeah, he just came out with The Mule. Oh, shit, mule. yeah, yeah, you were, you're, you're right. We're He's had a bunch of other movies, but Gran Torino is really good. Dude, but. Eastwood hasn't been... Uh, I haven't seen an Eastwood movie of any recent years. I mean, the, the most recent Clint Eastwood movie I think I saw was A Fistful of Dollars. My favorite Clint the Eastwood. The most recent? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's an 80, that's, that's like a late 70s. Early. You haven't even watched... Isn't there one where he hangs out with an orangutan? Clyde. You haven't even taken time Clyde. to watch that movie? <laughs> That movie looks Left amazing. turn, Clyde. The best Clint Eastwood movie is when he yells at a chair. <laughs> I'll let you two... You mean when he was at that... Uh... I'll let you two split. Do you want more? Or... I don't want any more. No, okay. I, I would like a few more. These are going to you. You get the rest, oh, bitch. bud. I love you get the rest. Dude, I, I fucking love um, English toffee. I, I don't still know have what... that jalapeno <laughs> taste in my mouth. That, you know what? The you gotta, jalapeno you went the away burn, for Tom. me. Um, so for those of you who don't know, this is we have a total $5 million... Um, M&M sponsorship. No, I'm no. kidding. No, we don't. I'm going to eat these coconuts. God, that'd be cool. Though. M&M's, get at us. <laughs> we'll give these fucking <coughs> jalapeno ones to M&M's Tommy's dog. For when you want uh, something no, we sweet, won't. We won't feed your dog chocolate, I promise. Yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not threatening to kill your dog. What'd you Dude. say? Huh? What? I said M&M's for when you want something sweet but don't want to completely disappoint yourself. <laughs> I dig the coconut. My wife fucking chewed me out. Why? I bought these a week ago. Mm-hmm. Right after the last podcast, I was like, oh, we're having these for the next podcast. Who else, Who was on here last week? Because I know Drake had a migraine. Nick. Nick Well, the whole me. town was frozen over. I mean, so I Drake, couldn't call you. Drake lives out in buttfuck nowhere. Yeah. And and Drake was... I should know. I drive there almost every day. Frozen over. However... I was like, ASMR chewing the... Okay, anyways. Um, however, we had to talk about the... Which we should probably consult with you on this. What's up? I want to go back What's up? a little bit. What's happening? Pokemon. What about it? Did you see the new announcement? Yeah, for Sword and Shield. Okay. If they make Scorbunny a firefighting, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna fucking punch a wall. I've yep, heard yeah. that. I've heard that a lot. What's Dude, your, who's your favorite? Stop with the fucking firefighting typing. I mean, uh, Grookey, if they made it grass fighting, damn, that's weird. That'd be neat. Yeah. Fucking mm, hit yeah. me with that shit. I was uh, actually thinking I'd like to see him with boxing gloves in the end. You know, you know me? Weird shit. Are you into Gro- oh, What's your favorite? Um, I, I, I haven't really uh, done a lot of research, but um, Grookey bunny. is probably... I, it's either Grookey or Score, score Bunny. Water types are for fucking... Now pansies. you're lonely, bitch. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Water types are for uh, fucking losers. That's playing the game on easy mode. Um, turds. I started on water type. I always had the, uh, I, I was either always a uh, grass or fire. I was Squirtle when I, you know, long time ago. Like I said le- last week, the first game I played was red version. And so I was like, well, you got to pick the Pokemon that's on the game. And so I, my first Pokemon was Charmander. Okay. <clears throat> a while back, um, Drake, our buddy Kramer and I, we all, uh, we all started replaying the games together. Mm-hmm. We'd, we'd all get to the point where we beat the Elite Floor, and then we'd fight each other. And uh, I had an Alakazam. If there's one thing I'm good at in video games, it's grinding. <clears throat> it's my favorite thing. I'm very patient. I can do it forever. I, I have over, love I have over 35,000 Iron Arrows on Skyrim. Mm. You make them by the 24. Uh, okay, I was going to say, is it... How many arrows do you make when you make one? Twenty-four. 24. Okay. So. Because I'm gathering supplies to make dragon bone arrows. You're, you're gonna need uh, one firewood, one firewood for um, each dragon bone piece you have, and you're gonna make twenty-four arrows. So yeah. I would do that first of all. Because I need to use up my dragon bones, and I'm like, I need mm-hmm. some badass arrows. You have a house yet? I haven't built one yet, but I'm actually considering it now. Dude, I have two houses in my in my playthrough at home. I've got Bree's home and uh, Honeyside and Rift. Oh yeah, I have um, I have the house in in oh, Winterhold. Oh, Winterhold, nice. I bought um, I bought that house, and then I, that's where I just store all my shit. Um, I used to uh, in in my Nord playthrough. Uh, I have the I have the house in uh, the Solstime. Oh, nice. The Solstime house. Or can you buy it from Glover? Or is there just a house for sale? There's a mission, 
uh, where, like, someone asks you, like, you're like, hey, can I help out with anything? And the dude's like, I need you to fucking clear out these bitches in this house. So apparently they're evil, like, necromancer witches. And you're like, all right. Cool. So you murder all of them, and you go back to talking to him. He's like, here's the key. This is your house now. And I was like, fucking dope. And the house has everything you need in it. It has a smithing. Like, it has a smith in it. It has an, an enchanter. It has an alchemist um, thing. Your room has, like, a million chests, plus, like, a little... How many like a weapons? safe for storing all your jewels and money and shit. How many weapons racks and um, mannequins are there? There's quite a few rep- weapons racks. There's four mannequins. Ooh, that's really that's that's nice. Uh, the the reason I really like Honeyside over in Riften is because um, in the basement there's an enchanting um, there's an enchanting station, and there are just shelves of soul gems, and then next to it are on either side um, weapons racks for swords and maces. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Two each, and then there are four plaques going down and then two mannequins in the corner which i mean i've only got two two sets of armor that i really like mm-hmm. in the game the nightingale armor and um yeah. ariel's armor nightingale from cool. the end of the dawn guard um i'm still working on the dawn okay, guard i'm now. not gonna say anything then because um it's it's a fun motherfucking quest line it's one of my favorites mm-hmm. right I'm, now i'm just chiseling through dawn i keep guard asking so people good. like is there mm-hmm. anything i can do to help and he's like the first time i did it we like we made some elixir like really really strong mm-hmm. Um, the next one, he gave me some rings. But after that, I've just been fucking murking people. Uh, oh, and then yeah. I got to do the one where you have to murder someone in a town that dressed um, as a Dawn Guard. <laughs> and have, have you, uh, have you, um, you found Soreen, surely? The, oh, the mom? Yeah. Yeah. You, not, not the mom, the, um, the, uh, that's Serana. Uh, no, oh. no, that's a, the, no, the, Serana's the daughter. Victoria. Um, no, Soreen is the, uh, the, the dwarven <laughs> mechanist, the, the Breton that you, that you recruit for the Dawn Guard. Oh, I haven't gotten there yet. You haven't, you haven't gotten no, that far? No, no. Oh, then you haven't done anything in the Dawn Guard. What the fuck, um, dude? I just found the mom and got back. How did you find the mom and not recruit Gunmar or uh, Soren? I don't know. Gunmar, the big beefy bastard, trains the trolls. You haven't done the quest no. for the You have to find no. the three people and recruit them for Dawn Guard? It's uh, no. I think it's three. Flor- Florentian doesn't come until after you you get Gunmar in. Well, yeah. Sorry. You no, have to found the mom and you talk to all three. And are then... you a vampire? Yeah. Oh, that's why. What? Uh, oh, you're, you're, there are two sides to that story. Oh, line. you're well, a vampire my, lord. Yeah. Where, I asked my uh, viewers what I'm, I'm supposed I'm going, to do. I'm going through for the first uh, time as a member of the Dawn Guard for the first oh, time. Oh, okay. I've never played it through and through to the end. I assume I have to kill Isran to save Serana at the end, which I'm mm-hmm. more than fucking willing to do. She's my favorite companion. She is an annoying companion. Dude, fuck you. She is such. She is so fucking versatile in battle. She follows she you also, around the whole time and does nothing but complain. When she she's also has me. less to say. Hey, hey or Digley, she has more to say. Maybe than if you else. use the right vocal cues, she'll actually be fucking nice to you. <laughs> nope, she just complains <laughs> the whole time. She does bitch a lot. Like I a mean, lot. I'm nice to her, but maybe, she's like maybe in like um like like the 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 conversation parts. Do the bits that involve her, and maybe she'll like see. Oh. They have an interest in me. Perhaps I should be fucking nice to Are these Are you teaching people. me how to date a Skyrim NPC? Yes, I am. That's interesting. Ironically, she's the only one you can't marry. Yeah, I've heard it, there are people who made mods. Real mad about her. it, personally. Yep. But I would never want her Skyrim, to... Skyrim, mod it until it crashes. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I so I'm playing as a vampire, and mm-hmm. then I... I never did do the... Like I, I figured Fuck, I'd I'm become a vampire Skyrim tonight now. Because I asked my, <laughs> I asked my viewers like, "What do you want me to do?" And they're like, "Be a vampire, duh." And I was like, "Okay." So I took the vampire lord. I thing. really don't like being a vampire. Chris, what the fuck are you talking about? He was talking about Jay Chuin. Oh, okay. Jay made the ASMR joke. Okay. Oh, ew. But dude, yeah, <laughs> vampirism. The the vampire lord, unless you're really committed to being a mage in in Skyrim, the vampire lord que- uh, a tree of that quest is. Almost useless. I'm. I yeah. mean, personally, um, with the Dawn Guard, you get you get crossbows, and you get yeah, dwarven yeah, yeah. crossbows, and then you get an enhanced dwarven crossbow that ignores fifty percent of armor. And if you Ooh, have your it's archery, it's really good. If you have your Ooh. archery pumped, you can have um, two two perks, which are uh, ranger and quick shot. You move faster with your bow drawn with ranger, and quick shot puts thirty percent onto your draw time. I basically have a fucking gun. Really, really good with a crossbow. And then with uh, with Soren, you, Are know, you, you done can, with these? Uh, I, I was I was just I was setting down. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. But, um, I just I want to clarify before yeah, I. No, you're cool. Because uh, if you're done, I'm eating them. Yeah, if you're can, not here, done, you can, I want you, you to you eat take them. Those threes. You take I want to. So by all means, okay, take I'll them. Just, 
that you fucking bought them, man. Oh, my But um, <laughs> with uh, with Soren, you can do um, extra missions, which uh, ancient technology. Remember those ones, Tommy? Mm -hmm. You can you can find uh, schematics for bows that explode. Bows that freeze and bows that shock, or, or uh, bolts that shock, freeze and explode. So you still, even doing the Dawn Guard, you still take time to go find the mom. She is integral to the story. Yes, yeah, okay. I just actually, as it happens, I just I just left the Soul Cairn in um, okay in my playthrough last night at home. That's where I'm out. Yeah, I'm, I'm heading my way to Morthal so I can be healed by a uh, uh, Phalian. I got me as a dragon. I had to become a, a vampire to enter the soul cairn because mm -hmm. I did not want to be soul trapped. I felt like that would probably bring up a lot of fucking problems. <clears throat> Healing oh, yeah. vampirism is right fucking easy. All all East Ron's gonna oh, do yeah, is get real easy. pissed at me. Yeah, he's be like, <laughs> Don guard. old man, angry, muttering. So I so I got the, he's like the, the sweetest, sweetest dragon, dragon you can call from the the dead. Yeah, that guy's cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then I got the the death horse you can ride around. Oh, uh, oh, the nightmare horse. Red bar. Yeah, which you, you can max out your magic on that horse because it just comes back from the dead. You mm -hmm. just use your destruction magic on it till it dies, and then it comes right back, and then you just keep doing it. You can do the oh. same. You can do the same thing with uh, Shadowmere. Mm -hmm. His health regen is so he can he can kill giant uh, he can kill giants and dragons. Shadowmere. I think I've only mm -hmm. ever found Shadowmere once. All you gotta do is um, go halfway through the fucking Dark Brotherhood quest line. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they just oh, okay. give them to you. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's where... I mean, I was working on that, too. That I'm At finishing those up, and those are the only quest lines I haven't Astrid actually Astrid is a vicious through. bitch, but, you know. I found, um... <laughs> so I found, um... Also, I recommend picking up uh, Cicero's clothes at the end of the um, quest line, because those are rare. Do you kill him, or do you leave him alive? You don't really have a choice in it. From what I've heard, you can have him be your follower. Yeah, well, I find him annoying, so I shoot him in the face with an oh, arrow. A lot of people <laughs> love I, him. I put an arrow between his eyes. There's a lot of people that say they're his favorite follower, or he's their favorite follower. It's weird. Um, Dejargo at the uh, at the college in uh, Winterhold has the highest hit points out of any companion. I have him, actually. Um, so right do, now I'm do, working with what's-her-name, but I've, I've I've he was my follower right before that. Brian, right? The, um, the weird, uh, or Serana. If yeah, Serana. Right and now. then um, I had a problem, though, when we were, like, freeing Serana. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I accidentally killed one of her things, or maybe I accidentally hit her or something. Uh, she left me alone, but she got in a fight with Zargo and murdered him. Like, <laughs> and I was like, bitch, I have to reload now. I reloaded, like, an hour before that. I was like, I'm not losing Zargo. He's my <laughs> fucking homeboy. How did she kill Dejargo? He, he has crazy hit points, man. It was a long fight. <laughs> he, has, he has 940 base hit points. Yeah. And, and I, the my problem I have with her is she runs directly in front of me when I'm about to snipe something. Or if you shoot one thing mm -hmm. and you get semi-noticed, she just runs out and starts zapping shit. And it's like, calm the fuck down. <laughs> like, I need you to just chill. I'm trying to sneaky sneak, killy kill everything. I, you know. Do you, do you have, do you have like a... Dual daggers or, or a one-handed for for backup if you get discovered. Yeah, like a good like a yeah. good sneaking person. I have um I actually do I have yeah I've uh I've been running around with Chillrinth mm -hmm. and the Nightingale Blade. Chillrinth. Yeah. Nice. That's a solid one. Um and um, then the Nightingale Blade, which is on my playthrough it uh it's all right because <laughs> you know Drake can't really play very many video games, um so he lives vicariously through me. Okay. Uh, playing video games in front of him. He tells me what to do and I do it. It's fun. Because I've played Skyrim. I've put more than a thousand hours into Skyrim easily. So I already know what most of the things happening in the game are going to do. Plus. And um, uh, I did the, uh, the the Red Woman quest line in my time of need is what it's called. So basically you, you have to kill these guys who, who are trying to stab you with scimitars. Those are from Hammerfell. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. And I, I took that. I took their scimitars and I enchanted one with Soul Trap and the other one with Fire. And uh, now I, do, I dual wield them when I'm when I'm a little too close for comfort with a bow. And uh, if you see a lizard man just stalking, like <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna get you. <laughs> uh, are you a lizard man? <clears throat> uh, on, on on Drake's save, I am Argonian, but on mine at home, I'm I'm an orc. I'm a Khajiit. I love the look of the scimitar, but it's just compared to some of the other swords you can find in the game, they're not that powerful. I mean, you can't you can't really smith it above 50 for max damage even yeah. at legendary. Yeah. You can you can download the 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 mystic weapon mod and mm -hmm. make them like a few knocks stronger, but mm -hmm. aside from that, I was thinking about it's, um, it's more like aesthetics. 
I usually I, I did have some like <coughs> a, like a dragon bone mace that was set up similar mm. to the other ones. I need to do that. Um, but yeah, no, I I've, I've been running around just kind of finish it because I'm I've never finished those storylines. I was like, I'll finish those and then I'm gonna finish GTA Five, <laughs> and then I was gonna now, finish. Now Jay's just playing Skyrim. <laughs> I get a lot of Skyrim. I get too distracted in Skyrim on my Xbox because I downloaded every graphical enhancement mod you can have. So pretty. And so it just looks gorgeous. And so I'm just walking around looking at it like, oh, look at that mountain. Oh, look at the And then a high trees. resolution bear comes up and slaps you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, or a troll. I ran into like a. Like, Dude, I'm trolls really glad are fucking my... easy. Well, once you get it past like level what ten or whatever, I'd say fifteen. Know, but yeah, they're anyway. easy. They're What's easy be before that level? with flames, man. I killed. I had to start a new playthrough on the Switch. I killed three giants the other day at level one because I got scared. So I ran to the top of this rocky outcropping, and the three giants they would stand like right here, and they couldn't get me because they couldn't climb up there. And so I would just poke them with arrows. And once you do so much damage, they would freak out and they would just run to the other side. So then I would run to the other side of the mountain, and then I would poke them with arrows, and then they would run to the other side. I gained like four levels off three giants at level one. <laughs> dude, that's that's a that's a lot of hit points to use and a lot of uh, arrows to fly. Oh, dude, I I used so many because you're level one. I had like fifty iron arrows, and yeah. like that was it. I used them all. I I, I um <clears throat> the uh, the thing about Skyrim on the Switch is I've I've watched a th- like, as many it's review. Good videos as you possibly can about it because i was real stoked about it because i fucking love Skyrim. it's good it's my favorite video game fun fact um and the the render distance is what is what kills me it's, it's better it, it bothers me it's way better than the 360 though so people that played it on the 360 and had no problem the switch is actually in between the ps3 and 360 version and the newer version it's got like a nice middle ground <clears throat> yeah, the the apparently the way they were able to make it work on the Switch was they took out like shrubbery and shit. Mm. Yeah, that's literally they, they took yeah. out uh, I had a lot a, of the extra shrubbery and greens and stuff. There's a lot of people like if they could make Skyrim work, they can make Fallout 4 work. And I'm like so no. the problem being like those aren't the same <laughs> well, I'm game. Like, I'm like the problem being is like if their solution to remove like to remove shrubbery in Skyrim was what made it work. What the fuck are you gonna take out of Fallout Four? Rusted settlement out buildings. Buildings. I guess rusted out cars is a good place to start. There's a lot of that shit in there, but I, I mean, they, they kind of like that the, provides useful <coughs> cover though. Yeah, a you, well, useful cover and it, and it provides like you have to kind of watch behind you when you're. I was doing, up, especially when you're facing a death claw or something. Yeah, like I was doing a bit of research on it too. The problem with bringing any of the Fallout's, even three, to the Switch is they use a lot of, like, algorithms, like, a lot of really complex algorithms for, like, enemies detecting you or enemies can shoot you from so far away, and, like, the Switch wouldn't even be able to handle that shit. You're, you're not really? the only player with vats in the game, dude. Yeah. That, um, that frustrates me because Fallout... Play New Vegas and enemies can snipe you and you can't even see them. I, I thought New Vegas. I thought what they need to do is they need to take time to put... Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 on the Switch. But if that's the problem, I can give it to Panic Button. <clears throat> they fucking... They put Doom on the Switch. They put oh, Wolfenstein dude. 2 on the Switch. And they're fantastic on the Switch. Yeah. <clears throat> give it to them. Let them do it. Panic Button. Um, they are the company that actually is... Get, like, they're getting the most money porting shit to the Switch right now. Um, Bethesda paid them to put Doom and uh, Wolfenstein 2 way, on the how Switch. How is Wolfenstein the new order? Um, it... I... Uh... Wait, the the new order, the first Wolfenstein, no, the, the, or the, 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 no, 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 the no. new Colossus? The new Colossus, thank you. <clears throat> it's so really good, too. My beef with the new Colossus is, is like, one of the greatest things about the new order was there was a bunch of, like, like random secrets you can find and stuff, and then you would upgrade from there. Here, they took a lot of that out, so you're not searching as much. Mm-hmm. It's a straight shooter now, uh. and you actually get upgrades <clears throat> by completing challenges, so like, oh, you need to get like fifteen headshots. I've, okay, I've, you've upgraded. I've heard you know. that, uh, that that you get a tomahawk instead of your um, your trusty okay. stabbing so, knife. Okay, so so graphics and and gameplay wise though, here's the cool <laughs> thing. Like, so when you get the knife, like you come up and you just like neck stab the guy. He's dead. Yeah. It's a little gory tomahawk, and you get that metal suit that you fucking you, you, wanted. You cleave off one of his legs. I, He's yeah. screaming in pain, and you chop his neck. I watched him cleave through both of the do- dude's knees. Like he cleaved straight through, and then was like, Ugh. 
Do you think DJ Blaskovich has any sympathy for fucking Nazis? No, he doesn't. And it was the most brutal fucking thing. And it's like, if you like brutality, that is the game. Dude, he rips himself out of a catatonic state out of pure rage for Nazis. The first level in New Colossus, you're in a fucking wheelchair. Like, BJ... Jesus, BJ, stop getting incapacitated! <laughs> BJ rolls through the whole, like, mission in a wheelchair and just wiping Nazis out just left and right. Like, it's... It's amazing. It's, Huck, it's the... Huck your tomahawk. You have, the, <laughs> you have the option to fight the whole German army or BJ. You take the whole German army. Yeah, like, the whole German <laughs> like, army. BJ doesn't get to him first. <laughs> yeah, and then, like... And then BJ gets the fucking metal suit from the first one. It's, um... It's... I, I've read a bunch of fan theories and all that stupid garbage. That and, suit is awesome. In the, in the first game, they get... You give it to the lady that can't walk, and I'm like... I understand that she can't walk, but I'm BJ fucking Blasvich. I earned that suit. Why did you not give it to me? And then they give it to you in the second game, and I'm like, yes, like my time is here. Death to uh, every Nazi ever. Yeah, I'm um, gonna the, kill all the, the goddamn Nazis. You guys knew the, you guys know the Doom guy. Yeah, Doom guy. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. a he's a distant relative of BJ. Yeah, that's the yeah. That's one of I've, my, I've, that's, that's I've awesome. seen a video on that. And I'm like, that is he's a distant. What needs to be. <laughs> it's like oh, so the Blaskovich family's kicking ass throughout the entire timeline. I'm actually <laughs> pretty pumped him. about um, <clears throat> the new DLC for the new Colossus. Is you play as his twin daughters in the 80s. That's and they're cool. out looking for him. They're, like he goes oh, missing dude. and they go looking. They're for looking him. for their dad and killing neo Nazis along the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In the eighties, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. Fucking heavy synth music while they're blowing down the street in their what? cherry red Fiero. I'm one hundred. Fucking sign me up. <laughs> I'm one hundred percent into this game. Fuck like yeah. I, I, I do like the game. I don't like that they took out sort of an explorative, like an ex. I mean, they still have collectibles, but they don't. The, the classic do Bethesda anything. rewarding you for looking around. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they and they still have it, but they don't. They're not. They don't have purpose as much as like, oh, I can look at some cool fan art like, later. Like it's like, in, eh. like in Skyrim, when you when you find weird shit, you either get paid or it gets you a bitchin' something. Yeah, I really hate games where the collectibles are just artwork. They do that in Star Wars: The Force Unleashed. You can find Jedi holocrons. And I got so excited, I found, like, all 250, and then it's just, like, artwork stills from the yeah. game. And I'm like, oh, yeah. thanks. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're mad about that? About fucking the, the the Arkham series, where all of the all the collectibles you find are just trophies and motherfucking concept art? It's frustrating. Give, I me, spent, a, give me a neat <clears throat> battering or something. I spent all the time in the first <laughs> Arkham game collecting all the Riddler trophies, and then I'm like, all I got was an achievement. That's you know what my dumb. <laughs> you know what my biggest problem with um, you know what you get for solving a riddle, nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so but at the, at the same time, as you solve that riddle, at least yeah. you have that accomplishment. Like finding something is different than like solving a riddle and being like, I did else. it. You know, that's a yeah. gameplay element. <clears throat> Whereas, like, when you're just like, hey, I found this thing here. Mm. And then it's like, here's some artwork. And it's like, thanks, dick. Yay. Um, um, uh, on, on the topic of high fantasy, um, since you're so damn busy, we, we started a, a supplementary campaign. Yeah. Uh, for, for Dungeons & Dragons. We alternate every week now. Um, I'm DMing it. Oh. Uh, Carter walked up to me, um, and he's like, hey, we're doing a new, uh, we're doing a new campaign. I'm like, He's like, yeah, and you're the DM, and he handed me all the books, and I was like, oh. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> I no, know. I figured you guys would just, I figured my character, because we left my, we left at a point where we could just leave my character off to the side yeah. while you guys you're, are doing You're shit. off doing your own thing. Uh, yeah. Um, on Odd Mondays. And my character can kind of do that shit. Yeah. He's a charlatan. He's a charlatan. So he's, he's, he's around. You just find him. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> like, so on, on Odd Mondays, it's, uh, it's the campaign with Carter DMing with our main man, Tommy, over here. And then on the Odd Monday, on the Even Mondays, it's, it's um, your sweet homie Drizzt. Um, DMing for the first time ever with um, V, Luca, Carter, and Drake. Are you guys? <coughs> so are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Um, like we're are, not doing a campaign. Is it your own? Uh, it's it's a it's a homebrew. I'm I'm writing it okay. as we go. Um, Drake's uh, Drake's character is a is a Goliath fighter, which. Sorry. <laughs> um, if there's Carter, anything that a campaign needs, is fighters. Fucking fucking Carter. <laughs> 
he he's playing an illusionist. Okay. He has no offensive spells. He cannot deal damage, and he has no weapon proficiency. And I have I have a really good idea of why he's doing it. Because after all these years, after all these years of, of friendship and mutual respect and everything we've gone through, Carter is still finding new and innovative ways to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I know okay. that he's been behind the DM screen while while this dumbass has been rolling shit with a do nothing mage. <laughs> so I'm sure he's returning the favor with an actual do nothing mage. Oh wow! wow. Would have been real helpful if I'd calculated my fucking spell, um, my fucking spell ability modifier. Because uh, that's that's why Roger couldn't hit shit. Oh yeah, because because I was I I was just going off of pure rolls. I didn't. Oh Roderick, I, I thought you just said Roger. I was like, what the fuck is Rydrick. Roger? Roderick. You just I I heard Roger and I was like, what? <laughs> like who's yeah. Roger? That's you got a new guy bullshit. named Roger? This yeah. is it. Roger. It's Roger, Roger's Roger. stupid little brother. Are you, are you guys running the same, um, the same characters? No. No. Different completely names. different. Okay. That's what I wanted yeah. to know. Carter's do nothing mage is named Rafik, and. As as do nothing as his character's build is, he's actually re- remarkably useful. Oh, okay. An illusionist is remarkably useful. I put them against some. Uh, I was being an asshole. I put them against some monsters that were far over there. I get. I put them against a flaming skull at level one. Tommy. <laughs> <clears throat> so okay, yeah. So I I should be back like sooner rather than later because I don't. Like, they're not utilizing me very much. The I'm only just... reason why I actually didn't contact you guys on Monday mm-hmm. was because I had already set up an interview for 2 o'clock thinking I was going to be busy at 3, and then, okay. like, no kids are signing up. Dude, that's fine. So I was like, fucking damn it. <laughs> like, hey, I'm, I'm not going to fucking... I'm not going to jazz on you. I'm going to adjust this, though. Um, so, okay, so... It's bothering we, we could, um... We could talk a little bit it's about, fucking, uh... Fucking <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm fucking I'm muttering to myself over here. This this goddamn. Um, I figure before we get into screen. the main Final Fantasy topic, I there wanted to rant about something very specific. All right, what would you like me to rant about, Jay? I'll, I'll see I'll see what what rage I have in my chest for this specific. I um, wanted to rage. I need to rage. You're gonna rage. I'm pissed off, Dude, man. Rage is my thing. So okay, so you're jacking my steez. For those of you guys, <laughs> for those of you guys who don't know, like, um, so I've been doing a lot of. Twitch streaming. Yeah, of course. And I read a lot about... Um, Shut up. <laughs> Race. My crowd, too. <laughs> so I've been reading a lot about... Um, you're doing a lot of reading and doing a lot of listening about, you know, Twitch streaming. Yeah. And I'm falling into this hole of Aria. fury and frustration because there's this... It's so weird because I'm I'm typically like... If, if you want to talk politically, we're only going to talk a little politically in the sense that I say that I'm typically... Like a PC type of person. You lean to the bit. left. We yeah. all know this. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. So I lean to the left. A little, little more PC than some people. Yeah. Um, however. However. On Twitch, I'm starting to find myself like less... P- like I'm getting frustrated by all of the PC bullshit. All right. There is um, a... Uh, there, and, and, and so I'm going to say it's not political. Like it's not about... No, like, dude. I, told, I totally understand that. I'm just going to talk about the execution of, of the ideology of this. I've actually I've actually thought a lot about this, and I, I I like that you brought up a topic that I don't have to shout and scream about for, okay. for me to be um, articulate about. See, I I I'm a firm believer in accepting anyone for whoever they are. I yeah. get that. I'm 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 down with that. I I love people, and people should love themselves, and that's how it should be. But I'm also a firm believer in the idea that um, either everything's funny or nothing is. No, okay, well, but we're 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 on a different track. Or are we, are we talking about like actual like just just dripping PC garbage? No, so okay, Hot so PC let me garbage. let me clarify. All right, let me clarify because I thought this is that's where that was. Going. So as a P, as a, as a streamer, there's a lot of do's and don'ts uh, about promoting you, yourself. So you've informed me how to deal with people, how to do this, how to do that. Um, right now, you know, just this idea of networking with people on yeah, Twitter. Of you know, you get on Twitter, you talk I, I to people. I heard promo when I was walking in. There's a ton of people, though, who are like, whenever you jump <coughs> in, like, okay, so let's start. So there's a lot of what you would call, like, Fortnite streamers. Fucking Fortnite. So everyone's playing Fortnite or Apex now. Apex is another game they're all playing and stuff. And it, and it's fine. It's fucking if, plebs, Tommy. If Play you like playing game, those like games, 
I don't. I don't have like. I don't have a problem with people playing with those games. They're just not my interest. Yeah, exactly. Mm. This follow for follow culture is bad. There's people who pop in. They're like, I follow you. You follow me. But what happens is, is if even if you hit follow and they hit follow, that doesn't mean they're going to come into your channel and watch your shit. Exactly. Which it's... I understand. And there's a ton of advice streamers out there mm. who are like, yeah, this is this is garbage. And I get that. This is garbage. <laughs> it's trash. And then because of all of these people, they sort of swarm around these like hashtags and shit on Twitter as well. There's this one called support small streamers. Hashtag uh, support small yep. streamers. <clears throat> Let me tell you something though. This as, is what as, as a small streamer. This is what pisses me off though. So the advice streamers are coming out there and they're like, "Don't use support small streamers because um, because of the the idea that that you're not a small streamer. You're a big streamer in like who's who's gonna be big someday." And I'm like, I get the message. I think it's really positive. I like it. But look, look, look fucking here. Sorry, pal, but I'm a realist. Yeah, but there is... I am a small streamer. I am streaming to two to three people a fucking day. One day I might be a big streamer. But... And I get your message of, you know, put yourself in this content... Like, if you put yourself in a box, you're only going to stay in that box. That's fine, you know, mental space-wise... But then they started, and here's the thing. There's this guy named Guy Level, and I love this guy. He's got a really good, great advice. I watched, I put out, I retweeted this video that is like 60 tips, and I think he has a lot of really good shit to say. But there's one thing that he said in there that fucking pissed me off. What was that? He said. You're actually mad about this. I am. Holy shit. He said, he <laughs> goes, okay, don't use that support small streamers tag. Okay. I get it. He goes, because if you put it in these, this is, he said this in other ways before, and it builds, builds me up in anger because it makes me, it, it, he is an influencer. Is it the condescension? Well, it, no. What he said was, if you put it in there, like, I myself am, am just not going to have anything to do with you. If I see you tweeting hashtag sports sponsor, I'm not going to have anything to do with you. Most people are going to do that. And he is, he is a trendsetter. So people, now we have this atmosphere of if you use support small streamers, you're not worth the time. <laughs> Just because the person has the wrong mindset, now you're semi blacklisting this person, and you and your your influenced are going to blacklist this person just because they use the wrong tag. And I'm like, man, fuck you! <laughs> like, it just it's one of those things where it's like I've taught him well. So so we've gotten to this point where it's so fucking PC. I saw a guy pop in the other day. You know what he said? What he say? He goes. <clears throat> He says, um, you know what? Don't network with me. I don't like the word network because it makes me feel like a number. You are a number, pal. Okay, you are also a person, but you're still a fucking number, okay? Like, one, two, three people, that's fine. And, and I get it. Like, if you don't, like, if you don't, if I make you feel like less than a person, if mm -hmm. I make you feel like only a number... That's fine. I'm sorry. I'll do better. But when it gets down to the point where I have to pick and choose every fucking word and every fucking hashtag, and if I use this hashtag, I get blacklisted. If I use this word, I get blacklisted. We're just getting a little too f fucking PC on here. Like, it's just, it's just this idea of, like... Ugh! Like, you're supposed to help people grow. You're not supposed to knock people down. Like I'm so proud of you. And then and then I did this thing. So there's this this thing out there. This guy opened my eyes. His name's Dudas Priest. I really like him. Oh, I like that guy. I follow him on Facebook. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Anyways. Dude, I've been into Dudism since I was like 15. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> so dude says... You're just he, like, that's, that's a really weird thing to be into. It's so young, Nate. <laughs> So he put in this thing where he said, uh, he basically said, uh, like, okay, this follow for, he's like, how many of you people, there's these tweets out there that say, you know, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to, we're, we're going to like, we're going to retreat, you're going to drop your Twitch link in the thing, and then we're all going to follow each other. You follow us, I follow you. Again, if you follow this person, are you going to support them? Mm -hmm. And he's like, this is ridiculous. And he goes, how many of you people actually, like, who drop your link in there follow the other people? And I put in there, I said, like, well, I tried, like, five and I gave up. And he get, he got on my Twitter page. He found the clip. I have a clip of me playing Resi, uh, Resident Evil 2. Mm -hmm. And, like, a zombie busted in the door. It was the first zombie I saw in the game. And I shrieked like a woman. The highest mm -hmm. pitch I could possibly have. I screamed so loud. He goes, here's an idea. 
instead of just putting your Twitch link and going, drop this clip. This clip is fucking gold, man. <laughs> he goes, it is fucking gold. Fucking drop this clip. And I said, incredible. okay. Incredible. And then he, he was talking about the idea. He goes, how about, here guys, try this. And he wrote out like a template of put in your schedule, put in your Twitch link, put it, put in a clip that makes you look really good. He goes, share your value, not just your name. I'm like, that's a great idea. So what I did was I found one of those tweets that was like, you know, like and retweet, yeah. put this, do that, do that. And I tweaked it to his design. I said, instead of following everyone, follow the people that you think you'll be interested in. Yeah. I followed a girl on Instagram. Like I, I follow, I found her on Twitch and I followed her because her name was like, I don't know, it was something like Pizza My Heart or something like that. And 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 she plays Nintendo games. And I was like 100% in. Sweet. I'm Sweet. interested. I will watch that. So... So then I put out there, I said, okay, follow someone that you're interested in. Chloroform! How's it going? Welcome. Hey, Welcome. hey. Up? hello. So, um, so, so, so I retweaked it to, instead of just follow everyone, follow the people that you think you'll be interested in. I said, tag people that you think deserve a shout out. I said, share a clip. Instead of saying share your Twitch link, I said, mm -hmm. share your clip. All right. Share it out there. Dude is priest immediately sent me a thing. He goes, just so you know, these don't fucking work. And I, and I sent him a message. I said, did you read it? And he's like, um, he goes, oh, he goes, now that I read this, he goes, well, I mean, I don't know if I would say like the retweet, like and retweet thing though. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, honestly, I said, I think instead of trying to say what not to do exactly, mm -hmm. maybe trying to just change the landscape a little bit is a better idea. Uh, and I said, ironically, this was inspired by you. And he's like, the more I read it, the more I get you. He goes, thanks. I said, honestly, man, I appreciate you sending me a message. I said, thank you for for looking out for me, having my back. I said, but but I think, like, out of context, I said, you, you're not understanding what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, man. So we had a fun conversation. And he's like, and then I'll follow you, man. I'll watch you tonight. And I'm like, well, I only stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 9 a.m. And he's like, oh, fuck. Surprisingly, the dudist, like, yeah. <laughs> the dudist priest is a pretty chill dude. Who'd have he, fucking thought? He's a super nice guy. <laughs> um, I'm just, honestly, though, it, it this, it's this idea of PC culture mm. going against the grind. And I get it. I've had people auto DM me. So I had two auto DM conversations at the same time. One was a guy named Butt Juice Soup. <laughs> who love Butt Juice Soup. Who him and I got into such a deep conversation. It's a rock solid username. Yeah, him and I got into a, such a deep conversation that I ended up like just show, like sending him a picture of my groceries that I was picking up. Like we were just, and then and then a week later he sent me a picture of his groceries. And I, I sent him one. I was at the grocery store. I sent him a picture of my groceries back. And he goes, why the fuck are we so domestic? <laughs> <laughs> and so we were laughing so Why are we so that. fucking familiar with each other, dude? <laughs> but, uh, but, um, Bud Juice and I had a conversation. This other guy at the exact same time goes, hey, I followed you on, uh... On... Fresh squeeze. <laughs> he goes, I followed you on uh, Twitch. Are you going to follow me? And I said, well, what type of games do you play? He goes, I play Apex, Fortnite. I'm like, okay. Uh, and I said, well, what what do you like to play? What was your first system? You know, I tried to have a real conversation with this guy. Yeah, he would talk know, to me. Like a, like a real gaming conversation. Yeah, how he, gamers talk to each other. He would talk to me, and every other word was... Fortnite. Um, no, every word was, are you going to follow me? Fortnite. And then at one point, I didn't get back to him. And I, I checked back, and he sent me a message that was like, I unfollowed you. And I was like, fuck you. Cool. I was like, for, first of all, like, if I was going to follow you, I'm not now, dick. <laughs> dick. Um, so it's it's this idea of, like, you need to be having conversations with people. You need mm -hmm. to be having deep conversations. But what happened to just following people whose content you fucking enjoy and leaving it at that? Because people don't understand. They want to grow fast. They don't want to grow right. Man, it's... Because if you have someone follow you, that doesn't mean they're going to pop into your yeah. stream and watch You're your content. You're getting no interaction. They're just listed as a follower. So, so if there were anything yeah. ever to draw from this experience, it would be one, when you network with someone, you have an actual conversation with them. Bud Juice put it this way on one of Surprising. our... Surprising! Be a fucking person and people like you. When I interviewed yep. Bud Juice for the podcast, actually, <laughs> I did interview him. He goes, he goes imagine walking into a... Like you're in a ballroom with people doing a networking conference and you just walk around handing people your business card and you don't say a fucking word you just leave like you hand everyone your business card take their business out. card too you know you don't even take theirs you just <laughs> hand them yours and go away people will be like 
who the fuck is this guy? Why would I? Why would I want to network with this guy? Who Networking the, is an actual conversation. Who the fuck does he think he is? Chloroform. What's happening, buddy? Like we 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 kind of we were on a tangent there. We got a face. Yeah, we do. Uh, we got a face from chloroform. Who is that? So, if you can imagine my frustration, um, yeah. it just I don't know. I got homie. Is it work? Righteous. Thanks, uh, homie. I, I like for that you watching uh, it work. <laughs> that you took the time out of your out of your work day to listen to us fucking chuckle fucks rant about random shit. Thank you. Yeah. I that is all I'm gonna say is that is my rant about just the PC Twitch shit dude, that has been I'm, I've been getting really pissed about it lately. It, yeah. Dude, I'm not like I'm not like really I don't have a huge <clears throat> online presence. Uh, actually, the online presence I have is shrouded in anonymity. Nobody knows it's me. I Try, like it that way. Trying to build on Twitch is incredibly stressful. Here's what mm-hmm. I will say. Um, just listening though, thought you were talking about. Final Fantasy and just stayed for the rant. Oh, well, we're going to jump into that here very soon. Hug, not yell. <laughs> like shit, Chris. I yell at everyone. <laughs> That's his hugs. <laughs> Fuck you, mom! <laughs> I love you too, son. Actually. <laughs> I don't think you'd ever say that. You're. I, I have said I, I, I have said stuff like that to my mom. He's like, we'll just be giving each other shit. We're like, man, fuck you. She's like, man, fuck you, you little fucker. <laughs> 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 I want to see that out of your mouth. Like I love you, man. I you know what's really funny is the other day your parents <coughs> came in mm-hmm. to the restaurant. To the West Side. Yeah, they came to the West Side. Yeah. I expected your dad to eat like a large fucking steak and like yeah. fries and like, like a trip to the salad. But like he, I I thought your dad was gonna put put down like a beast. He's a big dude. He's like, I'll take a tenderloin. And I was like, you want fries? He's like, nah. No. And then I was like, I looked at your mom, like, what do you want? She's like, give me that prime rib. <laughs> like, I was like, All right. Dude, um, dad's she goes, give to... me my pie. It's my cheat day. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dad's dad's uh, dad's looking to lose some weight, which is which is good. Um, I get it. I just it it threw me for a hey, second. Doesn't I, it though? I was like, what do you no, want? He's now like, that you've seen my father like, in in person, uh, uh, pretty red, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm the runt of the litter as it happens. <laughs> in, in terms of the Davidson men, I'm the smallest. It just blew my mind though. Yeah. I was I was waiting for him to be like put down like a beast. I was like, oh, I gotta see I gotta see his dad just eat. Dude, like you a should beast. see him at Orion's. <laughs> Orion's. <laughs> Straight up. Poor man's um, buffet. Delicious. <laughs> Pop and drizzed at West Side. I missed it. God damn it. Yep. 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 They're there quite often. And yeah, my, my my parents are the shit, dude. Um. So. So yeah, so that that's my rant. But the, what I would say, like, what was I? There was one thing I was gonna, one more thing I was gonna like, rant what, about. What, what, if 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 there were any potential streamers listening to this, which who knows if there are or not, what what would you tell them? Like like what what would your honest to god <clears throat> advice be for how, trying to network and expand your Twitch or streaming account in a way that is both constructive and this is okay. Useful. This is this is what I was gonna say that frustrates me. Um, talking about the idea that like findability on Twitch now is really difficult because mm-hmm. of the pollute, like it is polluted with people. Like there are tons of people and they're all doing mm-hmm. just, they're just uh, they're doing half shit. The, if I were to, we say as we're ranting into the void on Twitch. Yeah. Creative. As we're ranting into the void to five people. I don't know. Chloroform um, seems cool. Harris Heller, <laughs> he is cool. Harris Heller said something that was really interesting. It was like a lot of people, and he goes, a lot of my stuff is like advice stuff and how to improve the quality of your content. Um, he's like, but there's two, like, if you think about it as buckets, the first bucket is working on quality. He goes, but there's a second bucket that nobody's thinking about filling. He's like, it's the find me bucket or the findability bucket. And his solution Ashney Christ and Guy Level Solution all is the same, and it's like you need to be going over to YouTube. You need to be making content there. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, dude. YouTube's dead or dying. Well, it's not. It's there's stuff there, but like the problem being is, is like so. It's this. It's this even kill of a making clip compilation videos, mm. which can which is okay. Yeah. Um, but but at the same time, not as advisable. Or b making twitch advice Mm -hmm. which is really interesting seeing people who like like ashney and guy are still growing they just reached ten thousand on youtube they've got a good audience on on twitch and harris has a good audience on twitch but to make advice like if you're at my level making advice like streams what the fuck would you know yeah i know (laughs) my my success (laughs) 
I have some technical success. I would, I was going to do a video on like how to make this cheap ass lighting. Cause like I could do this for 20 bucks, mm -hmm. that type of lighting. And That's, it's just literally pointing two lights dude, on your face. It's, it's decent. If you can get down decent lighting and actual ambiance when, when you're, when you're streaming or when you're filming anything. <laughs> Too many things trying to grab people's attention, coupled with so many specialized interests for every person, makes it really hard for anyone to stand out in anything. Right. That's very articulate. Thank you, Chloroform. The yeah, other thing is, part. you can go to Twitter, go to Twitter, have real conversations with people. Exactly. And like, mm -hmm. like Dudas Priest said, show your value. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure that you're showing people your value, not just putting your name out there. Yeah. So um, that's why also, I put clips out like once a day. Also, I, I'd like to say, Chris, you, you did not lose your coolness. You are one of our supremely cool followers. Captain Cool over there. Cool guy. You're amazing, Chris. We Jane love you so much, dude. Lighting. Thank you. <laughs> you have been here for the all of this. So, okay. <laughs> so, so if I were to give, yeah, if I were to give advice, it's, it's work on your find, on top of quality, work on people finding you and I mean, just... When it comes to networking, have real conversations. When, when we started this, we established that this is just this is just us having fun. This is just, yeah. just this is just we're, we're, we haven't decided to shit or get off the pot. We're just having fun over here, man. Yeah. You know? If it can well, go somewhere why, cool, if it but... goes anywhere rad, but <laughs> if it don't, who fucking cares? It's that's weird. why I took two weeks off was because I was like, okay, I need to just chill. Yeah. We're, we're going to be coming at chore one, yelling at a fucking microphone yeah. in Jay's uh, spare room anyway. Yeah. Back when yeah. it was just us and yeah. Chris. Yeah, right? Chris! <laughs> Chris! Um, you, Chris. Day one. So, so that's my rant. That's my rant. It's just, just this idea of like networking, findability, yeah. how stressful it is anymore. Do you realize when it, whenever Twitch comes to Twitch, people will drop in for 15 seconds, and then they decide in those 15 seconds, just taking a, a 15 second look at you, whether or not they want to, to continue watching. I usually and watch... then from there, it's a step of whether or not they want to follow you. I usually watch a good 10 minutes if I'm watching a random Twitch person. Yeah. And in, in 10 minutes, you can kind of see how they stream. And 98% of the people out there are in for or like 15 seconds or under. They drop in, they leave. You if there's one thing wrong with your stream, rather than them telling you, hey, you got this thing wrong, mm -hmm. they just leave. Your audio sucks a little bit, they leave. Fuck. Your your lighting sucks a little bit, they leave. Fuck. You're you're not talking, they leave. Triple like fuck. fifteen seconds. It, and, and think about that. If you're playing a game and you don't talk for fifteen seconds, a lot of times there's dialogue or content that you want to I do that a lot. Like, look and, and people are like gone. If it's, it's a cutscene or something and I want people to like watch it with me, like why am I gonna talk over it? And here's here's the one thing I think as a as a viewer, if you if you have something that you should do, you should always drop a comment. Um, chloroform dropped in and put a face in there. We know the chloroform exists. Yeah, and he, yeah. he's, he's actually um, he's actually giving us some some really. If you're really working, that's fine too. He's but. giving us really articulate feedback on this tangent that we're on, and yeah, I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Sticking it out with us, man. It's yeah. fucking rad. But like, uh, <laughs> and, and it's fine if you want to lurk. I just my thing is like it just frustrates me when there's something wrong. They decide in 15 seconds they're gone, yeah. and they don't say a single word, and you have to suffer through the whole time. I'm fairly certain there's a Zaff <laughs> hanging out in the lurkers category right now because she's off doing junk in uh, Iowa City, listening to us. Ooh, yeah, you had to go to the Nards or. I was thinking about uh, pretty soon. Um, so I'm thinking about looking over my uh, my uh, chat bot. Mm. for my channel and i was going to make it uniform for both of our channels because then all i have to do is log out of one account and log into the other if i can do that um i was going to make it to where we can have the viewers make sound effects oh nice yeah and because um, yeah, that's in my stream that people is what i like too chloroform i've watched plenty of people stream that don't interact with chat Someone needs it's new socks boring. it's too. tommy there's a hole in his sock you got a hole in your sock tommy yeah, I gotta buy new socks when I get paid. Uh, my dog has this new thing. I bought him all these expensive dog toys, and he just wants to chew up my socks. Son of a bitch. <laughs> That's because your socks have foot sweat on yeah, them. Yeah, uh, it, it tastes a lot better. <laughs> it's. I, I think the thing about it is, it's it's uh, the the internet. It's become a place where anonymity is 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 king, and it's just so impersonal at this point that mm -hmm. you you dissociate actual humanity from 
whatever it is you choose to become on the internet. I think I see a rise, though, coming back of this connection. There are like, enough like people the standing people out. The people-to-people connection. Yeah, the people-to-people. There are enough people standing out on Twitch and saying, like, especially the Twitch streamer, mm-hmm. like, the advice streamers, they're saying, okay, dude, if, you if, want to know the secret to Twitter? What? Talk to people. Talk to people. Holy shit, look at don't, that. Don't put, I'm going live, don't just put clips up. Go out there and have conversations. Because you know what Twitter does? You know what all of the, the social media platforms do? Um, when you talk to people, mm-hmm. if they hit a like on your thing, they'll show more of your shit to them. Gee, it's almost like the algorithm was based on... Uh, it's almost like, like social networking is about networking. networking. Socially. Holy fuck, guys. We figured it out. Double llama. You want to be spanked? What? Well, I mean, that sounds like I mean, uh, that's your prerogative, man, but um what do you what do you want us to spank you with? I don't have anything. I'm I mean, we got that weird driftwood staff, but that would be pretty fucking painful. <laughs> yeah, you want this up the ass? All right, what's going on, Chlorophyll? Ah! You're listening to a podcast and the CEO of Twitter was tossing around the idea of having some kind of facial facial recognition to create an account to make sure that there's a real person there. That's a uh, uh, that's a little 1984 idea. for my taste, dude. Mm. That's an interesting idea. It's like when a, a baseball bat. I mean, that's an interesting choice. I'd go for cricket. Little little more wind resistance. Plus, it won't bruise as like unevenly. You know, not the point. <laughs> um, the 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 thing with facial recognition and, and like biometrics and open internet is that that information could be copied. It could be taken. It could be cataloged. And that's oh, I did actually laugh a little a bit. A huge about motherfucking it. problem. Um, the Snapchat face filter, someone was like, you realize the NSA is just collecting the image of your face, right? <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> the, you, you want the one on the left, the, the quiet blurry guy? Why? You want Tommy? Because he's quiet. He's probably a super freak. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, he's... You, you, Tom, you cut Tommy loose, man. He goes beast mode. Super freak. <laughs> but yeah, uh, chloroform, uh, that, that would be an interesting idea, but the... It's it's still the internet even as old as it is now, which is barely cresting twenty five years. Mm-hmm. At this point, it we can't have that kind of bu- <laughs> we we can't have that kind of thing on the internet. That's that's not how that it that is not how it be. Can I say something real quick? Talk talk about the China thingy. What's the China thing? Fucking what China thing is that? Um, uh, CEO of Twitter said it. Uh, I oh I know I I was just I was commenting on. On the idea of it, you know? I'm going to say something real quick, too, because I did go on a bit of a, like, a drama rant real quick. So all these streamers that I talk about and that I point out, I just want to say, like, Ashney Christ, mm. Harris Heller, Guy Level. Even though I, I, I got pissed about something Guy Level said, I think they're all amazing. I just want to point this out. I think they're all amazing, and I think their commentary is fantastic. I just think that one oh, thing shit. Camera left. Wrong. You're right, Chris. What? Uh, he's talking about Double Llama 3. He's like, uh, he oh. wants the guy on the left. I'm like, wait, shit, camera left. You. That's me. That's you. That's me. Tommy's not a super freak. Um. The social camera thing. The China thing. Oh, is there a China thing? Oh, shit. Thingy? Right. Um, China, they, they're, they're starting to implement a thing. Did you guys, you guys watch Black Mirror, right? Yes. Uh, you remember uh, the episode? About halfway. You remember the episode Nosedive? You're gonna have to describe the episode. All right. So basically, your I don't, <laughs> your titles are so. All right. Look, uh, so basically, the the idea of it is um, in in nosedive is the more status you have on social media, is directly imposed as your social status in your real life, as well. So have you seen? Uh, have you watched the Orville at all? I don't like Seth MacFarlane's dumb fucking face. Okay, here's the thing. The Orville is actually a masterpiece. Like, it's really fucking good. They are tackling social issues. I don't I don't like his stupid fucking flipped face. Flipped on its head. I don't... Well, so so he's actually only a very small part of the show. I don't like his stupid fucking face. I don't like his stupid fucking voice. I don't like his stupid fucking... So let me describe... Financing. Let the, me describe... The only good TV program that Seth MacFarlane has ever bankrolled or had any finger in whatsoever is the new Cosmos series. Uh, bullshit. Orville's fantastic. Fucking fight me about it, Jay. I will. So, I will. <laughs> okay, imagine this, right? So they're tackling uh, gay rights, transgender issues, but flipping on a, on its head. So okay. there's a species of aliens that are all male. All right. Um, they're all born male. However, you find out in one episode that sometimes females are born. And what they do is 
when they're a baby, they immediately uh, give them transgender surgery to be males. That's kind of fucked. They said it's absolutely wrong. So they're all in, in gay relationships as well. They're oh, all in male male relationships. I they mean... lay eggs. But the 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 main character, he like one of the main characters, he gives birth to a female. Mm-hmm. And they do transgender baby surgery on the baby to make it a male. And he fights it. He's like, This is my baby. I want it to be the way that it is. And the the husband is fighting it as well. He's like, No, I want He's like, I want this surgery to happen. And then it goes to become a political issue on the planet. On top of that, you find out that his husband is also a transgender. Mindfuck. Moving on to another episode. Mm -hmm. You meet his ex-boyfriend on this planet. Turns out he's attracted to females. You are immediately imprisoned on that planet if you're attracted to females. I remember seeing a weird YouTube video uh, with the same cadence as this. It's it is it is so politically charged. The episode that I'm thinking of though, mm-hmm. that reminds me, this <laughs> there's a goofy character. He's being all goofy. Um, they land on a random planet. He jumps on a statue and like pretends to hump the statue just as a joke, and people filmed it. Turns out, you the justice system is based off of likes and dislikes. So you wear a badge and if you, if people, enough people hit dislike on you, Mm -hmm. you can be charged. Um, and everyone basically charged him with a political crime for humping a statue of a national figure for them. It would be like the idea of us burning the flag. Yeah. So, so he gets charged. And so what he has to do is he has to go on to like a talk show tour to ask for forgiveness. It's basically real life. Fucking zinger yeah. from chloroform over right? there. Nice. Yeah. You have to ask for forgiveness, and if not enough people believe you, like you have to, you have to get over yeah. four million likes. So somebody put a hash mark next to that guy. If people don't like you, you get you get sent to prison forever. So he has to go on this thing to get out of trouble. Zaf, just text me what you want me to say, because I have no idea what you're referencing. I talk about so many goddamn things. Nosedive. Okay, get back into nosedive though. Uh, it's. Um, I thought she was mentioning that there was a there was an article that uh, that uh, uh, Zaf and I were 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 looking at. It. It was basically about how uh, social status could be transferred from online social status as well, and actually influence your real life life, like your your status on the internet, followers, likability, all of it would be like comparable to how people treat you. In your everyday work and interpersonal life, it is well. it is interesting this landscape that's changing. Like if you mention to someone like I'm a Twitch streamer, like people get this idea down. Like it's like when I was working at the video game store, yeah. everyone would come in and and they would say, "Must be nice to sit around and play video games all day." And I'd be like, "Yeah, must be," <laughs> like, <laughs> because I like you don't you that's, don't sit around and play video that's games. That's not all what day. you did at gamers. You did inventory. You worked the register. You sure you tested games to make sure they were you, functional. Yeah, you turned the game on for fifteen seconds to make sure it would move. Turn the game on. Um, check all the menu options. Make sure it would you know function so, properly. So people see that as. Is Twitch as well. It must be nice to sit around and play video games all day. And it's Dude, like it's hard ass. Work. You're you're also a video game. Like you're also a TV host. You're working in broadcasting. You're working with lighting. You're working in, yeah. and you're doing all this yourself. You're investing. You have to put money into it. That camera there cost me fifty dollars. Nice. These lights here. If I were to buy those on Amazon, maybe not those lights specifically, but something. Fucking thanks to Zaf, we have yeah. actually decent lighting in yeah. here. Yeah. She gave us this lighting. <laughs> if you wanted to buy something like this, it'd be like fifty dollars. I have no idea what the light bulbs would cost you said like something around 150 um but you know depending on the wattage and what you're looking for um my backlighting you know that's that's a whole thing it's all it's all crazy how much shit there is all right so i just got some i got got some clarification from zaf it's uh, okay social tracking in china based on you know social media that's whereabouts everywhere telescreen 1984 you know fun shit you know what telescreen is, right? No, tell me. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> fucking this is this is what I get for being a literature nerd. Okay, so George Orwell wrote a book named uh, by the title of 1984, uh, back in the 50s, and um, in in this dystopian future, there there um, there's a heavy authoritarian uh, authoritarian government that is prone to rewrite history, and uh, what they do is um, they they monitor their people completely, kind of like in um, kind of like in North Korea. Where they, they always have a radio that's always on. You can turn it down, you can't turn it off. 
same concept. But it's a telescreen that that transmits and uh, receives video and audio. So they're they're always tracking you. They always know where you are. They, it's 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 some some real creepy shit. That you might have seen protesters recently just on on uh, videos or pictures on the internet, uh, wearing skulls and holding signs that say "We are the dead." That's that's from 1984. That's a oh. that's a quote. Like in Britain when they started putting in all those closed circuit cameras on every city block and every subway, people would stand out and protest uh, with the "We are the dead" signs because honestly, I mean the British hierarchy is kind of on its way to being you know, the Ministry. Okay, I'm not going to get into that. That's a lot of speculation yeah. and, and um, uh, notes that I don't have on my person. So, and you don't have a whiteboard, do you? No. Okay, then we can't, on we can't get into this right now. Carrying on, China Final thing. Fantasy. Yeah, we should talk about Final Fantasy. So, That's why Chloroform was here. So Final yeah. Fantasy. So, so try, just, try to to, to, just to clarify, Chloroform. George Orwell oh, nice. is a pretty sick author. Your damn Skippy is Chloroform. So to clarify, he was ahead um, of his time. Animal Farm's a little antiquated, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna to do? To clarify, um, uh. Like, so I, I myself am a Final Fantasy virgin. Mm. You know what's really funny and sad, too? I okay. typed virgin, I typed in the description, J, the Final Fantasy virgin. And when I hit update, Twitch was like, this might break some of our rules. And I was like, fuck off. <laughs> you go fuck <laughs> so I had, to I had to change it. But I am a Final Fantasy virgin. Yeah. I've never played a Final Fantasy game in my life. You said you've only played seven, right? Yeah, I've only played seven in, like, bits of, like... Because we have that awesome Sephiroth clip. Yeah, the, the, the clip of me <laughs> shrieking Sephiroth from uh, One Winged Angel. So, so Tommy here is Such actually a song. Tom, eight is your favorite. What? T Tommy just about passed out when we did that. Tommy is uh Tommy's our our resident our resident Final Fantasy expert. He is. I have played um, every single one but one. So but so like one. For those of you who don't know, Humble no, Bundle has... I've played every Final Fantasy, but Lightning Returns. Humble Bundle Good. has a sale. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the one that you have I thought you were saying you haven't played one. No, no, no. I've played I'll accept one. one, which happens to be Lightning Returns. So Humble Bundle has a sale, and I bought some games. Chloroform, I bought eight. Um, <laughs> off of a recommendation from a friend of mine, she was like, you need to... She she talked about this a long years ago. She was like, everybody loves seven, but eight is my favorite. And she would talk about how amazing eight was, and I was like, okay... I'm going to try 8 out. Um, and so I bought 8, and then I asked Tommy what his favorite was. He told me 4. He even, like, wrote the number 4. I used the number 4. Not IV. He told me 4, and then I bought 5 like a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking suck, Jay. <laughs> I do. It pisses me off so much. I It looked cool, but Tommy was like... I go, yeah, I, I bought five, or I, I thought you said five was your favorite, and he goes, no, it's four. He goes, five is, uh, he goes, five is actually one of the weaker ones, and I'm like, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> so, Tommy, mm. yeah, eight is the most exciting, I think, four is, like, the critic's choice. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually between four, seven, and six that people flop between their favorite, especially, like, critics of the series. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Final Fantasy. Let, let's, Tommy, go. <laughs> yeah, Tommy. What, like, well, let's say what's your. You've been real quiet this whole podcast. Nate and I have been. No, I've ranting. been. I've been letting you guys rage because Final Fantasy is the thing I'm gonna talk about. So Final Fantasy, though, like, okay, give me your pitch for four. Uh, before I give my pitch for four, you need a quick history. No. On the series, in case you didn't know. Yeah, let's do this. What's it is history? called Final Fantasy because back in... Uh, the game came out in like 88, 89, something like that on the Nintendo. But Square... It was Squaresoft at the time. They had put out a bunch of really shitty card games and just really... Just bad games for the Nintendo and nobody was buying their shit. And... The head dude... I want to say it was Nomura back then had this idea for a giant RPG, and pretty much Squaresoft was broke, and so they threw all their last finances... It was their Final Fantasy. ...everything they had into this game, and he named it Final Fantasy because he's like, if this doesn't work, we're fucked. Like, we're done. This is it. This is the last game. So they named it Final Fantasy, and then it fucking blew up, and... The reason... This is the last yeah, game. 15 games later. <laughs> the reason for... 
is my favorite and it came out as two in America because it was the second one we got but now it's four is because it was the first one with like an actual plot line with characters because one there is basically no plot it just tells you like hey this problem is happening grind to oblivion like that's one <laughs> grind to oblivion until you can't can tell you can uh kill it. the the actual two in Japan has just a basic story three is just a basic story it's just generic characters you don't care about four actually had characters with personalities and there wasn't there wasn't a class system like other ones in four each character was a specific class and i just love four because it's about um the dark knight cecil harvey he pretty much grew up an orphan and the the king of the kingdom of baron adopts him and adopts Cain, and they become like his adoptive children and so he grows up a dark knight and the king ends up in the beginning of the game starts going evil and he has Cecil show up to a kingdom of mages who they're completely innocent and they've done nothing wrong and they end up slaughtering like all these mages and stealing their crystal to take its power. Christ. And so the beginning of the game, Cecil is talking to his woman Rosa and he's like, what have I done? Like, there's no good left in me. And so literally he's just like, I've wore this dark evil armor for so long. There's no redemption for me. And Rosa's like, no, you can do it. And so four is about his quest for redemption. Silly protagonist. There's always a redemption arc. Yeah. So four is literally about his quest for redemption and redeeming himself and like shedding his dark ways. And then he ends up saving his kingdom and fights the big bad. It's fantastic. Tommy, okay. what is better? To be born good or to overcome your evil nature through great strife? Shit. I don't know. That's a quote from Skyrim. I know that, but... Spoken by Parthenax. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you kill Parthenax? I never kill Parthenax. Okay. I don't want to. I would never. They're like, kill him. I'm like, fuck you. I would never kill Mario. He's like, well, then you and I can't hang out. And I'm like, fuck you. I'll, I'll hang out with a dragon I'll over play, here. I'll, I'll, I'll go hang out with, with an old dragon. I'll hang out with Parthenax. Fucking have him teach me how to shout people into dust. Yeah. You go, oh, you'll teach me but, to yeah. use a sword that kills dragons? Four has a... Or I'll be a dragon's best friend. Four has a fantastic story... Almost all the characters are super likable. Like, everyone likes all the characters. The story for 4 is great. It's fantastic. I I personally <laughs> love... I love the DS Lite version, which is the Steam version, because it's got fully voice-acted cutscenes. It's mm. got oh. re really great graphics. Like, Oh, that's my wife. I can see that. Just ignore her. Just ignore her! <laughs> <laughs> uh, she did... Okay, here's... Okay. Are, I'm a good husband, I swear. Are we However, hiding, are we when, hiding from your wife right when now? When she's Jay? when she's at work, I'm like, go to fucking work and work. I'm on my lunch break. Let's talk. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> those uh, those those people who are trying to exercise aren't going to scream it themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so okay. Busted. Thank you, Claire, for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm doing um. I, I So I bought five. What's five about? Um, okay, five is one of the more generic ones for this story. Wop, wop. There's literally four crystals. The four crystals get stolen. And so the, world, them. the world starts going into disarray. You join the main character, Bart, who I just really hate. That's why I hate five. And you meet, like every other Final Fantasy, you meet a cast of eclectic weird characters and you just retrieve the crystals. I've only played like... 10 hours into five and i got bored it's it's got the best job system in the game though you you pick a class for your character they always start as freelance you pick your class the more you fight as that class it levels up you get job points and you get skills and stuff and then later on in the game you have the option to you can take off that class and when you take off that class you still retain all the skills you learned as that class and then you can just throw on another class and you can like multi-class and so you you can you, you there's several classes you can also unlock and combining certain classes by the end of the game your party can be pretty busted. So quick question. You talked about the one that you think is just completely awful. Uh what which one was that again? There's three of them. Three <laughs> of them. Tell, tell me about your three least favorite Final Fantasies. All right. I want to hear so, about them. 10 2. It's the sequel to 10. 10 was fantastic. Shouldn't have been called 11. The way Final Fantasy X ended, it was actually sad. It had a sad but good ending. Like, it was great. 
and then everybody liked 10 and it sold so well they're like let's make 10 too except the game sucks the story is awful you play through because in 10 you play as Titus and at the end of the game stuff happens uh of course T Titus is the main character he falls in love with the main female character it's a love story it's actually a good love story at the end Titus is gone 102 is about her search for Titus except in order to get the secret cutscene to find Titus in 102 you have to 100% the game in order to 100% 102 you have to talk to every single person in the game and not miss one single line of dialogue in this like 60 40 to 60 hour game you cannot miss one single line of dialogue from one single NPC or it's not 100% and you don't get the ending I could never do it because the game story is trash and so I was like all right this is what YouTube's for. It wasn't worth sifting. Yeah. I'm going to go on YouTube. I'm going to look up the final scene. It's going to be fantastic. Like, I'm going to see what all the fuss is about. And then I looked up the final scene, and it's like two minutes of, wow, that was fucking dumb. Yeah, um, the whole, like, Batman secret endings, mm -hmm. like, you have to do all the Riddler trophies. Oh, my God. I was like, that's what nope. YouTube's for. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't right. have the time. <laughs> You want to put you want to put secret clips in your game? YouTube bitches. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, so what's your what are your other and then, yeah, what are your other two uh, least favorite? All right. Chloroform says don't say 9. No, 9's great. Well, Tommy actually recommended 9. Nine's um, pretty good too. Earlier like I think the yeah. last podcast or before so, cuz I said I want to get 7 on the Switch and he goes 9's out already. I was like So, no. 13 came out. Everyone hated it because of the hallways. I actually enjoy 13. I like most of the characters except for Hope. Like, I like all the characters in 13. Graphics, e even going back and playing 13 on the 360 and the PS3, it still looks beautiful. Like, it's a fantastic looking game. I played through 13. It was fine. There was problems. It's super linear. There's hallways. 13 was great. 13 2 was announced, and they showed trailers, and they're like, open world, go where you want. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, give me some of those characters. None of the characters you like are in 13 2. I mean, Lightning's, char Lightning's sister, Sarah... You save her in 13. In 13, all the scenes with Sarah are great. She's an interesting character. She's likable. I was like, okay. 13 2. They're like, Sarah's going to be the main character. It's going to be awesome. Open world. I was like, fuck, sold. I pre-ordered the like $85 collector's edition with the, steel, <laughs> with the steelbook case and the soundtrack. And I was hype. I was like, let's go, GameStop. It comes out. I start playing the game. 20 hours in, I've done nothing but fucking fetch quests for 20 hours and got almost no story. Oh my 20 God. hours of fetch quests and then I quit playing the game I ended up I hated it so much after spending 85 on the collector's edition I gave it to my friend Willie I was like here Willie have 13 too Willie got like two hours into it and he's like I can't do it man I got two hours in he quit playing the game still listens to the soundtrack every once in a while because the soundtrack's great like dude don't you love it when a game has a good score uh every Final Fantasy ever even the bad ones have fantastic soundtracks but the games are awful and then Lightning Returns is one of my least favorites. I still haven't played it, but I mean, if it's anything like 13.2, it's going to suck. So, so but I mean, it, it took all the way to Lightning Returns to come up with like a secondary title rather than being like 13.2, mm -hmm. like Assassin's Creed 2, and then you have Brotherhood, and then you have Revelations. Like, that's how you and should do it. Like, there's tons of other ones. There's spin offs that are fantastic. And actually, anybody listening right now, if you love Seven, Seven has a spinoff on the PSP called Crisis Core, which is mind-blowingly good. Chloroform, I can't play any of the soundtrack right now. We're recording a podcast, but we're also... Um, one, we're recording, and then two, uh, I'm not sure if like that falls Co within like copyrights. copyright for yeah, Twitch yeah, and whatnot. Copyright, so copyright, copyright. so I, I'm sorry, Chloroform, we won't, we won't play it right here. Um, uh, I think, I think uh, legally you're only allowed to play the first 15 seconds of any song before it becomes copyright infringement. At least on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, on Twitch, or, like, they'll auto-mute you. Is it like, a, like, is it like any 15 they'll do seconds a 20, of the song? 20 minute or mute. is it just the beginning of every song, 15 seconds? What's I that? have no idea. I don't know. I, I know for laws of parody, you have to change at least 60% of the lyrics mm -hmm. for it to be considered. Oh, what did yeah, I think, what about, think nine? about nine? Let's talk about nine. Nine yeah. is actually really good. You... It stars the main character as Zidane. He's, I mean, he's kind of a failed womanizer. Zidane. He, he, he's a ladies' man, except, like, the whole game, every lady he hits on turns him down. It's hilarious. He is a... Like a Johnny Bravo character. 
he's a humanoid character, but he has a tail. I haven't played far enough. Like, I haven't beat 9, and I know I should because it's great. I've played, like, 25 hours into 9. But you play... He as... loves the Black Mage, dude. Oh, Vivi is my favorite Final Fantasy character. Vivi's amazing. So you play as this troop of characters, except they're basically thieves, kind of. And you're an acting troop. And in the beginning of the game, you go into the Kingdom of Alexandria, and you got hired by somebody to kidnap the princess. And so you show up, and you're going to put on a show called The Rose Will Be My Canary or something. It's the most popular play in Alexandria. And while the show's being put on, you're supposed to kidnap the princess. But unbeknownst to you, the the princess's mom is a piece of shit. Like, she's a shitty leader. She's a shitty mother. So the princess is actually trying to run away. And so... Ooh, fucking arcs, man. <laughs> yeah. So the whole beginning of the game starts, and pretty much you run into the princess not knowing it's the princess... And as you're leaving, because they're, like, shooting at you and you're in your ship, you're like, well, we failed to get the princess or whatever. And then the chick you meet is like, oh, about that, like, I'm the fucking princess. Not so, friendo. And the main, my favorite plot point of the game is you find out the Kingdom of Alexandria is using scientific and kind of genetic technology. They are genetically engineering these black mage characters. They wear hats and they wear wings. And... They're almost like Terminators in the sense that they have no personality and no emotion and you can just order them and they're like black ma- black magic soldiers, but they have no soul. And Vivi finds out that he is basically one of these people, but he has a soul. And so most of the, a lot of the game, and it's my favorite plot point in the game, is Vivi like, pretty much going like, what is my worth? What Grappling it, with his he, apparent humanity. Uh, dude, yeah, he has an existential like humanity crisis and he's like... Literally, like, what is my worth? Am I just, like, these guys? Am I nothing? Like, do I have no soul? Am I everything? Am I something different? Yeah, and it's just really freaking epic. And the reason I like it, too... That's the word that chloroform used as well. Yeah. (laughs) Final Fantasy with 7 and with 8 and even with 1s after that, they started going in... And even with 6, they were going into the realms of technology and science fiction and they were just going nuts. And 9 kind of brings it back to the roots of magic and fantasy and... Like, 9 took it back to that, and it was really good. And also, even playing original 9, it's a damn good-looking game for a PS1 game. Like, I downloaded it to my Vita, and every time I booted up on that, I was like, this was on my PS1? Like, this looks really good. I always forget you've got a fucking PlayStation Vita. I fucking love the Vita. Shut up. (laughs) Do you... Do you it, know it was the Vita? Uh, it was almost steampunk apparently. The Vita is literally my handheld PS1. <laughs> it's a it's a the Vita's a really good. Yeah. I so like I was it. thinking about this the other day. Quick quick tangent yeah. and we can we can um I was thinking about the Switch and how much of a problem the Switch is. How is it a problem? Um <laughs> it's fucking amazing. It's everything you want it to be except or it's it's it's, it's as a machine it's everything you want it to be except it's run by a company that has no fucking idea what they're doing. Hey, I'm N- sorry. Nintendo's just winging it right now. Dude, no, Nintendo's no, 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 no. been flying by the seat of their flaming ass for 40 years? That, it pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's an interesting it's an interesting thought to think Sometimes about. Sometimes like, they put out just mountains of garbage, and then you get a breath of the wild. Well, so I started thinking about this idea, though, that like if you look at, if you look at Nintendo right now, and I mm-hmm. think part of the problem with the Wii U was this idea that at a certain point, Nintendo split their focus, so they started doing home consoles and they started doing mobile consoles, and okay, so that no really no. that really fucks your 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 like you only have one you have two focuses now, and so then so everything gets all split up and fucked up and stuff, and so I think that's kind of what happened. I think the switch is them coming home to being able to just do one stream of consciousness, like put their focus into one thing, because they're going to start ending the 3DS soon. However... Thank you, Rick Lorform. I'm, I'm glad to see other people have that opinion, too. What did he say? He, he said it's, it's almost like they think of a great idea, then sell the prototype immediately before anyone else thinks of it. Right. Which is, honestly, not a bad business model. Mm-hmm. But... But it's also inferior product for the next three years while they figure out the fucking kinks in the actual fucking idea. So this mm-hmm. is them kind of coming home to being able to put their focus back into one thing. It's it's a, it's home <laughs> console now, but the home console can fucking go with you. And I think the PS4... I think the reason why Vita got dropped so quickly was they were like, oh, wait a minute. We're not um, gaming. Well, it's like, oh, wait a minute. We're going to have to split our focus, and that's mm-hmm. going to be a problem. Dude. But, what they, but then they did the most genius fucking thing ever. What'd they do? 
They're like, let's just make this a port machine and just start dumping shit into it. And yeah. they just dump whatever the fuck they want into it. And I'm like, that's such a great idea. The problem with the Switch being, A, to get the, to get the wheels, <laughs> like to oil the cogs and get the wheels turning, mm-hmm. they started dumping, like Nintendo went from being like, we are very good at like our selections, we're very picky. We make games for children. Like we make a very specific, well, well very specific niche, but like also like we... we pride ourselves on quality that ends up on our system Mm -hmm. and then with the switch they were like put as many mobile games as we can on this thing and so you have if you go into the store first of all the The eShop is is a fucking mess the eShop is garbage and there's no way to find out if there's a good game or not because it's all fucking you just have to search through thousands and thousands of are these good so they're just throwing up games so that all of that quality out the window because there's a certain like they just let whatever in at that point can I talk to you guys about a, a genre of video games that I don't particularly care for because I just uh, do when, it. When you were talking about like um, video games that are just absolute shite, um, uh, a particular game came to my mind. It was a game introduced to to me by um, Tommy and I's mutual friend, Devin. It was a Digimon Devin. story, Cyber Sleuth. Get out of here! It's fucking trash. It's it's Get it's a Pokemon game with Digimon skins and it's a book. That it is you... a fantastic game with a terrible story. Yeah, yeah. There there's a part in the storyline where um where um they're called living uh living real girls, which are basically uh android sex dolls have been taken over by a, a malicious virus Digimon and are starting to kill neat basement dwellers. Are they actually That is true. Dolls? That is it's that is part of the, the fucking story. My problem with those games is that the gameplay was fun. It's literally a turn-based RPG where you raise Digimon and level them up, and that part is fun as shit, and it's amazing. The I story appreciate is the trash face garbage. Form. That's what needs to be uh, innovated next is filtering games through platforms like Steam and eShops and whatever. They need to just redo the eShop because it's garbage. Right? I mean, like, honestly, just give us a simple really fucking drop-down menu. What do you want? <laughs> but is it, you know? isn't it interesting that as as Americans we're looking at what they're doing? So so the, ja- the Japanese are like, okay, we're going to be conservative about how we let things go. Mm-hmm. What we put on this console. They're even to the point where they're not even sure. They're not sure it's worth it to port all of their old classics that people would dump money into. Mm-hmm. Which the answer to that is yes, it is worth it because... <laughs> Because you've changed the platform. You've made it to where we can be both mobile and, and on our home. TV on the same thing. Our same save file. Anyways. That thing over there is the system. As an American, yep. my strategy would be just dump it all on there. Get fucking, like, they're talking to Microsoft right now. Let's get Halo on there. Let's put Gears of War on there. Like, Gears of War. They're like, let's, oh, let's go back on another. All the Zeldas. All the Zeldas, just dump them on that bitch. All the Marios. Give not me to a Mario fucking, too. Not to retread an old plot <laughs> give point, me but a fucking give me HD remake. Fucking Borderlands on my Switch. Borderlands is better than Destiny. Fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> Why won't you let me give you my money, Nintendo? Oh, please, <laughs> I'll pay full price for Borderlands on my Switch. You, like, a, you guys um, need some beers. I don't drink, but. You can have the beers for... Wait, you're at work. Never mind. Dude, <laughs> don't drink at work. <laughs> yeah. We don't do, have the beers for We us. do not endorse that. Yeah. Unless it's your job. Unless it's your, like you're a fucking brewmaster or something and you have to taste beer. But other than that... <laughs> I'm a professional beer taster. Work. I'm slowly killing myself. So, um, so they were... So there's a rumor, actually, that, um, as far as... Oh, he's this IP. Is, I only have two things of nerdy. Oh, he's at a fucking help desk. You, you, dude, you can huh. be drunk as fuck as long as you can still read Google. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> My um, so as far as nerdy news goes, there's only two things that I could pick up this week. One, Luke Perry died. Rest in peace. That's Bummer. terrible. Yep. That sucks. <laughs> Let's all name our favorite Luke Perry movie. Done. Uh, <laughs> I hate to bash on Luke Perry, but literally, I I, I was like nine hundred two one zero star and star of Riverdale, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm not with you. The last sorry, time, but uh, Dylan Sprouse is the star of Riverdale. The last time I was I was um I I had Luke Perry relevant to my thoughts was when they had a spree of him and Family Guy. That was it. I'm not joking. So that, I mean, rest in peace, that sucks. 
Uh, and then they're also going to put, um, there's a rumor they're going to put Friday the 13th on the Switch. And I was like, fucking finally. Give me them fucked up facial expressions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> give them to me. <laughs> back to, back to, so that's my problem with the Switch. But it's this idea that, like, I'm looking at an American ide- ideology from... And, and projecting that onto Japanese business practices. And I'm understanding that We that know doesn't, nothing of the culture. That doesn't Japanese translate, business. but I'm like, look, just give me everything and I will pay for it. Well, fuck you. Like, <laughs> Who do you think you are? And they're like, no, we're using business strategy here. And I'm like, fuck off! I want, um, I want Borderlands! Sir, there's more nuance to business than just all of it all at once. My good man. <laughs> yeah. Everything. Put it all on that fucking switch. They changed the platform. You can play it anywhere, and your save file continues. Granted, the Vita, I was watching someone play, because your your Vita can connect to your PS4. Oh, nice. I was watching someone play Spider-Man on their fucking Vita. Yeah. And and Wi-Fi connects. You can do a second screen. I used to play, I used to play Destiny 1 on my Vita all the time, because I was, I was too lazy to go across the room and get my controller. (laughs) So I would literally turn on my Vita and use it as my controller. They've changed the platform of gaming, and they're not executing properly. <laughs> but they also didn't have a lot of money, and they split their focus. Man, maybe mm-hmm. they're just tapering on. Did you ever think of that, Jay? I'm fucking tired of this trickle. It's two years! Why don't I have Ocarina of Time on this thing? What is going on? Where's my Zelda collection? Where is a lot of stuff we could talk about? It's like- been two! Years and you just announced Mario Maker two. Like get, get, nice. I keep mentioning the Metroid Prime trilogy. If you want people hype for Metroid Prime four, like I know you're restarting it. Remaster and, the originals. Uh, they brought the originals to the Wii with motion controls, which I didn't care for the motion controls. Who the fuck but bought a Wii? I did. I did. I bought a Wii for the Virtual Console, bro. You bought a Wii. My my Wii was literally full of just classic Nintendo games. You That's, bought a Wii. I mean, I didn't buy a Wii. So actually, funny. You bought a Wii. Funny a story Wii. about the Wii. The fucker printed money is what that thing did. Uh, <laughs> right out of high school, I was working fast food and not making that much money because it was a starter job. Yeah, I know. I'm doing your job. And my uncle was like, hey, I need someone to watch your cousins at night. Literally, all you would do is come over to my house, stay overnight while I work, and then hang out in the morning for a bit so I can get some sleep. And you just watch your little baby cousin. And I was like, that's fine. I'm down with that. I got to show up to his house, I got to play on their Xbox, watch their satellite all night while the kids were in bed. Eat their food. And eat fo- eat whatever food I wanted, and then in the morning I'd watch my baby cousin for like five hours, and then I would go work McDonald's, and then I would rinse and repeat. And it was great. I did that for like six months, and he's like, oh, I owe you for watching the kids. Like, what do I owe you? And I was like, I'm, I'm gonna want a Wii. And he's like, okay, I'll buy you a Wii. What my uncle did, and it's the only time he's ever pissed me off, is he bought a brand new Wii with all these brand new accessories, and he bought games for it, and he had this shiny brand new Wii, but he kept it for himself and gave me his, like, two-year-old fucking junk used one. And I was like, oh, thanks, buddy. Like, you didn't buy me the brand new one. Um. And then I, I wanted the Wii really bad because of, like, Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, and then I got the Wii... And I bought Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, and then I was like, oh, there's, like, n- almost no other games for this thing that I want to play. <laughs> I, I, I had Sonic Riders for the GameCube that I played on my Wii. That, uh, that Actually, that's the other thing I wanted my Wii for, because my GameCube finally took a crap on me. Fucking Time Splitters on the Wii? Forget about it. You figure it out. By the way, have you guys ever seen... Sorry. Random new tangent. Have you guys seen um, Letterkenny? Um, no. I've seen promos for it. I've been binging it on YouTube. It's fantastic, or on uh, Hulu, and it's fantastic. I mean, I, I love Rednecks. I like Canada. Trailer Park Boys is one of my favorite series. It's kind of um, it's really interesting because the guy who's the lead, he's got this really high pitched voice in the show. Uh, but when you actually see interviews with him, he's a fucking man. Like he's like, oh, like, you, like you, you see Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, surely. yeah. You know Bubbles. Yeah. When when you see him fucking love without the goggles on and like just talking like a person. His, his, that's a face that he makes. It is mm-hmm. never... He makes that face. He does yep. the underbite and everything. Yep. That's not what I he looks like. I have never thought it's a character. to look up Bubbles before. It's a character that he plays. He just I looks know. like a regular dude. I've just never thought about it, though. First not time once. I saw him as a regular dude, it kind of freaked me out. I was just like... 
But let her, uh, let did her you see it really swear she's dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how I saw his face, too. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Bubs, what, what's going on? My favorite quote from Bubbles is, you fucking want one? Yep. <laughs> My favorite. You fucking want one? You, you fucking want one, Ricky? Yeah. <laughs> you fucking want one, Ricky? It wasn't me, Ricky. It was the green bass. That's what I think of every time you say, like, you want to see how hard I can hit. I think of, you <laughs> fucking want you one. You want to know how fucking hard I can <laughs> yeah, punch? Yeah. You fucking want one? <laughs> you fucking want one? <laughs> My favorite still of the Green Bastard is when they're walking past Leahy in the trailer park and it's just... And let's get <laughs> Julia trying to pull the Green Bastard away from Leahy, flipping him off. It's fucking... I mean, like, Bubbles, that's probably a healthy way for him to 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 get have an outlet for his rage. And his Ju- it's Julian, right? Yeah, Julian. Julian's my favorite character because he's the, always walking he's always around with a drink, drink in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> the, my favorite is them, like, trying to... Um, what's, what's happening to all the weed, Ricky? It's a fucking rack, he's Julian. <laughs> they're trying to steal, um, like, a parking meter, <laughs> and he shows up still holding a fucking glass... <laughs> A good fucking he takes it right from there. home. That's a good fucking kitty right there. That's yeah. a good, <laughs> that is a good fucking kitty right there. Look, uh, look at this little shit. <laughs> I love that. Oh, so good. Letter Kenny's it's kind of like that, but it's um, it's more like improv. Like they just run like run on lines at each other and stuff, and they go back and forth. And each each character has like, <clears throat> I know it sounds like I'm talking about Trailer Park Boys, but it's. I, they have like this back and forth, um, like my, the opening. So the opening from, monologue, from what I've uh, seen and heard of Larry Kenny, it's kind of like Trailer Park Boys, but more redneck and less white trash. Uh, well, there's different. There's three different splits. Okay. So Letter Kenny has there's the skids who are the drug abusers that mm-hmm. are like you know, they're just they're just druggies that like the main the main guy. Um, Looks like the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Love it. Um, <laughs> like, there's, like, How dare first, you laugh at They're first introduced to like fucking dancing in the street. Like It's really weird. Um, they're definitely high as fuck. There's the rednecks, and then there's the hockey uh, hockey guys. The hockey hooligans. And, I fucking love hockey hooligans. And they're hilarious. <laughs> like I love... And the, the opening monologue is the rednecks. Those two... The two hockey guys pop out because they're dating Wade, the main character's sister. Mm. Um, both of them. There's a... Her sexual promiscuity is fucking amazing. She, I, it took me a long time to realize, like she was fucking them both at the same time, like not not like one at a time, like just I mean they were all fucking. Um, hey man, what, and, whatever and, you're cool with. Yeah, no, and I it just took me a long time. Like her and her game is crazy. Like I didn't even realize like she even swings the other way. Like she's fucking. Like there's a part where she fucks the hottest lady in the show. Hey man, nobody's um, all the way straight. That's just how it be. So she, so she goes. So, so she gets out of, or she's, they're coming to pick her up, the two hockey guys, yeah. and they get out and they're like giving Wade shit. Wade's the toughest guy in Wade's town. Wade's the, the big burly dude. Not the fat one, but like the, the tall. The built one. Though. Yeah, b- tall like built in the, one. Like in the new, um, in the season eight. Very promo, rigid. She's the one that says the stupid fucking poem. Yeah. He, well, he always has a poem or he's something a, he a, starts with. He's a poet. It'll open it up him like holding a dog and be like, you're hanging out with your pals the other day. And then I'll like move on. You'll do the scene at the end. And you're like, "Yep, there's such a thing as too much fucking information." <laughs> and he's still holding a dog. Like I love when he just shows up. He's holding a giant dog. He'll just like walk in, and then walk out. <laughs> uh, but he's um, so he's super rigid. And these guys are like giving him shit because he broke up with his ex girlfriend, and they want to fight. And he won't fight. He doesn't fight anymore. Uh, and you guys aren't high. <laughs> and he shows up. Bold of you to assume, Chloroform. <laughs> they show up to fight, and uh, they're like, let's fight. Uh, like, yeah, you, you want to fight? You want to fight? So they take their shirt off, and the one guy leaves his sunglasses on. And they're like, you take your shirt off, but you leave your sunglasses on? What sort of fucking pageantry is that? <laughs> and then, uh, sort of fucking pageantry is The that? other guy takes his shirt off, and he has a treasure trail. And they go, Jesus Christ, look at that fucking treasure trail. And he goes, oh. He goes, did you, did you, you look like a Dutch nine-year-old girl. And the other guy goes, would your aspartition quaff that for you? And the other guy goes, you can kiss my aspartition. <laughs> <laughs> it's just three guys just fucking railing these two hockey studs. Just giving them shit, like fucking, a, and they go, the pace is like this. It's just so fast, you can hardly understand what they're saying. But it, when you pick up what they're saying, it's the funniest shit you, you've ever heard. You've seen wait, the, the Great White North. 
from from old SNL with the, with Moranis and I SNL. probably have, but it's been a long time. Oh yeah, Hoser. I fucking oh love yeah. Rick On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me beer. <laughs> that one, you know, oh, great that was North. so good. Well, I, fucking, I fucking love Greg Moranis. Uh, he's he, you know, he stopped doing comedy because his wife got cancer and died, and he had to take care of his kids and whatnot. But you know, what do you do? That was a wow. Rick Moranis. Is I mean, amazing. I know that. Yeah. I've heard, and, and it sucks. He does want to come back because his daughters are grown. I want waiting. him to be the gatekeeper. If they're gonna do Ghostbusters two with Zool, have Sigourney Weaver and fucking Greg Moranis. Do it right. Are you talking about Ghostbusters three? No, Ghostbusters two. Yeah, like the, the shitty remake from 2016. They they set it up for a sequel. If you watch the stinger at the end. Oh no! They're you. You haven't even heard, have you? They so they're planning new, Ghostbusters three. Ghostbusters dude. three sequel to the brand, original series. Sequel to the first two. I can't remember who the director but, is, but he's a good pick. But everyone's the, on board except everyone's for Harold Ramis. Well, yeah. I was gonna say everyone's on board except for Egon. Finn Wolfhart's been hired. To be in it, Finn Wolfhart from Stranger Things. Yeah, I know who Finn Wolfhart is. I'm 100 percent in already. I'm, they I'm, did a I'm teaser. Down. It's summer next year, so a year a year from this summer. Okay. Um, they did a teaser where like the old like they had the old car and like the wind like the music starts going like and then yeah. like the wind starts blowing up and lightning strikes. It's like da 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 da, and everyone was like ah, it's coming. The worst thing to come out of the 2016 Ghostbusters movie. Is Fall Out Boy's cover of the Ghostbusters theme? That was the it's most fucking. I like. Awful. I liked Fall Out Boy when they first came out. They are fucking garbage now. Sure, we're going down. And that was the worst thing nah, that's dude, ever Fall happened. Fall Out Boy did the soundtrack for Big Hero Six. They did a lot of songs for it. They were great. Yeah. Okay, how long ago was Big Hero Six? Four years ago. Like four years ago. No. They did uh, Centuries, and they did. Um, yeah, I don't like Immortals. That song. I like those songs. No. I think they're okay. um, all right. Um, quick. Quick fun game, lightning round. Holy shit. Let's go. Um, least favorite movie cover of a popular song. Go. Fall Out Boy's Ghostbusters theme. Go. Yeah, Fall Out Boy's Ghostbusters <laughs> Panic at the Disco's Bohemian Rhapsody. I have not heard that. Oh, have and you I heard won't it? ever heard that. I haven't heard it. I haven't even watched Bohemian what Rhapsody. What sucks? No, it's that's for Suicide Squad. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, I, I remember that. Yeah, fuck that song. Yeah, no, they had the real song in the movie, but they had Brendan Urie write a cover for the soundtrack because they couldn't get the rights to actually put the, sound, the, the song on the soundtrack, but they had enough to play the 45-second clip at the end of the film okay. of Bohemian Rhapsody. So Brendan Urie, he wrote on the first day of Christmas, 12 hours of Drizzt Region. <laughs> All right, anyway... Um, uh, what, what, what Brendan Urie did is, um, he tried to mix two mediums of music with, um, Bohemian Rhapsody. He went for, like, the synth DJ sound and the actual operatic opera singing. Which... I don't like Simple Plan, Simple Man. No, not Simple Plan. Sorry. Keep going. Shut up. Anyway. Um, <laughs> shine Down. Probably. Yeah, Shine Down. Uh, don't get me started. Oh, my God. Um, but, <laughs> yesterday... Who likes Shine Down? I don't know. A lot I mean, of people. David the Gamers loved Shine Down. Bully was okay when I was in high school. They have a couple okay songs. Yeah, exactly. And the rest is complete shite. Yeah, but um, what what where I was going with this is Brendan Urie definitely has the range to do Bohemian Rhapsody justice. Mm-hmm. If you've heard Death of a Bachelor, you know that Brendan Urie's great. But... He's fu- he's a fucking phenomenal musician and singer. But what I th- I think he overextended himself mm-hmm. with with Bohemian Rhapsody, and he probably didn't have enough time to. Do it right. It's is where that is. So it, it it just falls into the category of garbage covers that nobody wants. Like it's it's no Johnny Cash hurt. Oh. Does anyone have a favorite movie cover song? Oh, that's a thinker. My favorite movie cover song is the "I Need a Hero" cover from Shrek Two. Ooh, sang by uh, Meryl nice. Streep. It's it was good. really fucking oh, good. Oh, actually, funny you should mention Shrek because my favorite uh, movie cover is "I'm a Believer" from the first Shrek. Yeah, by Smash Mouth. Yeah, that is really good. It's a really solid song. Uh-huh. I'm pissed that Smash Mouth is a meme because <laughs> they're actually a pretty solid band. Yeah, no, Smash Mouth did a lot of really good shit. I grew up on their... Man, um, you might as well be walking on the sun. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I grew so up on their Astro Lounge. Astro Lounge yeah. is the oh, shit. Dude. 
Oh, uh, well, Fave 2000's band? Fuck, fuck, Chris. Damn, dude, that's a hard question. Uh, I can't that's even get my brain that. into the 2000s. Oh, chloroform. Right now. Shit, sorry, chloroform. I, I was, um, I was <laughs> I'm the fucking worst, if you didn't know. If it was Chris, fuck you! If it's chloroform, sorry, bro. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't say fuck you, I said oh fuck, man, because that's a hard decision. That is a hard question. Um, a lot of good uh, I heard about this last night, don't know why you guys, uh, would Oh, care yeah, about the it. Sandlot TV show. Sand- no, don't care, fuck it. They Downhill after the fucking first one seriously no. man, the, the, origi- the original cast is what do you think about that Jay and Silent Bob reboot with whom um, Jay well, and Silent Bob oh cool I'm down with it like, <laughs> Kevin Smith if it's is Kevin one. Smith directing it and yeah, Jason no. Hughes playing Jay then yeah, I'm no. in yeah it's Kevin Smith all the way I don't know if it's I think it's I don't know if it's the same two people playing him though uh, I think Kevin Smith confirmed oh, it. Green Day people. is rock solid my dude uh, Dookie and American Idiot, fuck yeah. I love Green Day, but I consider yeah. them more of a 90s band. That's true. They did. They, get, they well, got they, their start in the late 90s. Yeah, right? but the 2000s was an American That's Idiot That's really when came they out. kick up, yeah. when they, they kicked it up. Yeah. Well, they were, they were super Dude, famous. Dude, American Idiot is a they fucking amazing They sort of died out, album. then they came out with American Idiot. Yeah. Um, I love American Idiot, however it did become, like, sort of a... I think like a genre copy, like it, like everyone wanted to kind of copy that. Yeah, they, they were going for um, the pop punk grunge rock yeah. vibe. It was also I think for a little while too. They they fell into that a little too much. Like Twenty One Gun Salute is that Twenty One Guns. Twenty One Guns is a good it. song. Twenty First like, Century Breakdown is pretty good too. That was the I think same it's a little shit underrated over, over um, and over and over again. Like, people shit on that album. I thought it was good. Dude, American Idiot is one of my favorite albums uh jesus of suburbia is oh yeah also, fucking incredible also a super and most people don't realize it a super super political album if you listen to the lyrics no shit mm, dick like, tracy any other brilliant deductions <laughs> i'm just saying a lot of people <laughs> never bring that up super political album. middle I'm school that. i fantastic i, I was after, they, that. after they were lame but but in my middle school it was great <laughs> that was do you remember good charlotte I do. I um, listened to Charlotte. Good Charlotte that frequently. was that was my middle school. Like whenever that came out in middle school, everyone's like, "I'm punk now." I listen to Good it Charlotte. It sounds sad. My, introdu- um, my introduction good, to Good Charlotte was from a, a Madden game because one of their songs played on it, and I was like, "Oh, I like." Oh, this that's player. right. They like the way that they used to handle implementing music into stuff. Like when we were younger, was really weird. Dude, like I'm not a huge fan of Madden. Mm-hmm. I played all the games with my brother. The soundtracks were always great. Like they had like really popular songs. Yeah, but why? <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, because why? That's what I'm saying. Like when they implemented nobody's playing Madden for the football. When they like implemented music in this shit. Fucking a chloroform. You know what else had a power soundtrack? I a know. Feet. I was Tony Hawk. Fuck Tony yeah. Hawk. A- a- ATV Quad Power Racing Two for the original Xbox had a kick-ass <laughs> soundtrack, especially in freestyle. Uh, had Godsmack. How about that was how about the soundtrack for uh, Need for Speed Underground? Ooh. Do you guys miss, like, I miss when they, they had games where, like, it was essentially, like, a task to do whilst listening to really fucking good music. Yeah. Uh, Any for, Need for Speed. For instance, <laughs> like, well, for instance, Tony Hawk was, like, skate around and do these things and collect shit while you're skating around over and over and over again. It, it was Im- Im- insanely repetitive. However, you had this amazing soundtrack to yeah. listen to the entire time. So you were just jamming the whole time you, you were, were like, playing. Yeah! <laughs> like this is, and there's like a point where you would like you would find the path to the roof to do the skating across the power lines, and that's when you lost your shit. You're like, this is the peak of my this life is, right this now. Is the, uh, this is the you could infinite if you if you knew how to toggle the um the 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 D pad right, you could infinitely grind the, and then uh, the bowl. Yeah, Tony, Tony Hawk, Hawk games. After Underground 2 went slowly downhill. You know what? And then they did Pro Skater 5. People have a beef with American Wasteland, but I fucking loved that game. Like, I really liked American Wasteland. Hey, man, it sounds dumb. One of my Uh, favorite Tony Hawk games was on the DS. You know what, Chloroform? I was thinking the same thing. You boys keep going on a tangent. I need some fucking nicotine because I did not sleep very Um, well. I think we're actually... Guys, I think this is... Are we we done, Zos? We should end here. Are we out of here? Yeah, I have to be at work at 4. I still have to edit the podcast. (laughs) All right. Um... It may um, not end up till tomorrow because yeah. I'm Chloroform, feeling a little less if you're, if you're less still OP, listening, but... 
fucking thanks for hanging out with us, man. Yeah. We hope to see you again. Um, if not, you, you've you been great. Dude. I'm not Seriously. sure if you followed Chloroform, but do us a favor. If you haven't, hit that follow button. By all means. We're here every um, week. Uh, it's usually always this guy over here with, yeah, uh, I'm with the a producer. mix of other cast and characters. A revolving yeah. door of... I'm the main producer and if director. You, other if, people. If you go back into the uh, into the archive on YouTube, you'll see that the, the three of our stupid faces have been on this, this here podcast Yeah, we've done this since the beginning. Um, if you go on YouTube, you might even see our... Harrison Ford bit. Yeah, uh, that's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So okay, and then uh, that was just us riffing the first day. Like yeah. I sat down. I'm like, we're gonna do like a, a dry run, and then we ended up doing just a first podcast. Um. It was like an hour long of us just yeah. talking about good old Tom Selleck yeah. over there. So um. So <laughs> just so you guys know, uh, we we're gonna be back. Um. I think he might be out smoking actually. Chloroform. Yeah. Chris um, is usually here too. We're, so we're going to be back next week. Uh, one thing to look forward to is I'm going to be reviewing uh, Captain Marvel. 100% I'm going. Like, do not do not have any doubt. I, I talked com- about doing I Train Your Dragon 3 and I just didn't. It's not coming um, to town right away, according to the website. Which no, I'm it comes out on about. Thursday. In Grinnell? Yeah. So oh, because it's not listed on the website. Dude, he's got homies up. in the theater. It is. Yeah. Who? No, I'm going. Um, what do you so, mean, who? The manager. I'm going too, then. <laughs> Shit. So, yeah, Thursday I'm going to be going, Thursday night. Um, I don't go to the Grinnell Movie Theater. I know. You you have, you have you had bad luck. Shit, I'm going to go, um, like, Friday, then. I want to see Captain Marvel. Yeah, I'm going to go. And then, uh, uh, so we're going to have that, and then we'll talk about other stuff as it <laughs> Dennis goes. Dennis Quaid is the new Harrison Ford. Fuck <laughs> yeah. So, so keep, uh, keep it in your out for next week. Monday, we're going to be interviewing Tripod GG. Uh, and GG? then I'm, I'm just finishing up editing the uh the D podcast i have to add an intro and an outro to each of them so how did that go um, uh how's that been uh how, how did you segment it out i basically broke it down uh the the first spot where i break away is when i literally ran from you guys to go down the hallway <laughs> and you guys are like fuck off you fucking <laughs> suck i don't i can't help though like i'm not that helpful <laughs> it's because you made a fucking warlock that's a halfling <laughs> you're fucking useless and you're going to die before level five i promise Oh, I'm excited. Anyways, <laughs> I'm excited. Anyways, I will be back. Uh, so so we're going to try and get that up, but that's only on the audio portion. So if you guys want to take a listen to that, mm-hmm. uh, feel free. Don't, don't forget to social click on our, all of our social medias and shit down below. Yes. Um, there are links down below. Or if you're watching this live, there are buttons down below for everything. I redid all the panels for our page. I don't see So that. it looks less terrible. It looks beautiful. Um, so I will see you guys next. Or we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Oh, also, I'm going to be streaming tomorrow and Friday at 9 a.m. I think I might actually try to play some Final Fantasy. We'll see. Oh, um, yeah. I don't know. Well, no, you got me on the Skyrim kick again. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been playing Skyrim. Final Fantasy is a lot of Skyrim, reading. But oh, yeah. It's a there's lot a lot of Final Fantasy. Well, I've got, so I've got Final Fantasy games. I have GTA V to beat. I still need to beat Dishonored 2. Um, and then I really want to play Witcher and Assassin's Creed Origins. Which oh, Witcher? I fucking um, love the Witcher, Witcher 3. 3. Mm, I, got, so I have good. Witcher 3, but... I have I have Witcher 2, Assassin of Kings Edition, on my uh, Xbox 360. Is it good? It's fucking awesome. It's okay. pretty good. Alright, guys, but we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Hopefully your pockets are empty. <laughs> Put a little nerdy... Go oh, fuck you, Chris! <laughs> <laughs> you almost Tr- read it! Trying to get me to fucking say it! Fuck you! See you next week, bud. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Be good. Oh, fucking damn it. <laughs> you fucking suck. Okay, we're gonna work. Hi, we're back. Be good. <laughs>